Thanks. Okay. They change so much with uh, the different different UI. Wonderful. Hello. Okay. We are live now. So that was a that was an adventure. That was an adventure working through the different OBS changes to figure out how to get my audio set up and my stream key set up. But we're here now. So welcome everyone to Bot Arena 214. Woo! Yeah. Um, so this is Bot Arena 214 where we've got some of the best bots competing. So it's an automatic tournament and we're here to find who has the best bot. Is it Gear? Is it Saras? Is it Tiga? Is it Rob? Is it someone else? We'll find out. Um, now, if you don't know what Bot Arena is, it's a free-for-all tournament between top players, or anyone who signs up, really. If you have a bot that can do automatic actions, then you'll, you'll be welcome here. Um, and I'll have a link in the description for that later on. So bots must automatically build an economy, expand to new rooms, and attack other players. Rounds usually last a week or two, with very fast ticks, making for some extremely exciting and fast-paced gameplay. Now, this is... We're a little bit in because, again, I had some streaming issues. Um, so we've already got some remoting here from Gear and Cyrus and, and Viking. Um, and over here we've got Tiga, the best player. Um, looks like there's already maybe some conflict, even. Um, now it looks like I have some bot, some bugs in my bot, but we'll, we'll fix that up. It's not too big of an issue. Um, and the start is pretty slow tick, so usually it gets faster as the game goes on. And yeah, we've got some fighting already. Um, so the south player, Tiga, here in the orange and black, and he's considered the best player in the game. Um, while Lord Grey Whaler up here, he's a bit of a newer bot, but he's clearly put in the work and... Although he's losing, um, you know, maybe he'll fight back. Maybe he'll win. Um, this is interesting. Uh, you win kind of, yeah, I'm not so sure. But. It, it looks like my uh, remote defenders aren't even firing. I'm not sure why. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, that's bad. Uh-oh. Yeah, I hope you get that fixed. Uh, clearly Tiga here. Tiga is well known for having great combat alongside a very effective economy. So when that adds up, it gets very, very bad for any players next to him. Uh, down here, though, we've got a bunch of harvesters kind of just not doing anything. There's too many for the sources here. They can only have five on this source. So it seems a bit inefficient, but, you know, it's Tega. I'm sure he's figured it all out. Uh, over here is, is Rob. Uh, I think he still has a bunker layout, although maybe not for sure. Um... I do want to check on Cyrus and Rob. I'm hoping there will be some conflict in their remotes. Interesting. So, yeah, this is a pretty good start. Awesome. Yeah, I'll check on that soon. Oh, and, and joined with me, of course, is... Um, yeah, we've got Cyrus. Sadly, no gear or Tiga or Rob, but they're busy. We've got... Stationary harvesters here, it's very good to see. Haulers, the sign of an efficient economy when you've got stratified economic roles. Although I'm not sure if Rob relays, I doubt he does. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Or it doesn't, at least doesn't look like he's making an attempt or, or an effort to relay. Yeah, those creeps just passed each other. But still a very efficient economy. Um, I think last bot arena, or maybe it was two, three bot arenas ago, Rob had a very strong victory. Um, so, yeah, he, we've got Gear and Cyrus here. So, Cyrus is uh, sort of like a baby Tiga. He has a very similar base, very similar strategies, um, although Tiga's quads are obviously much more developed. Cyrus, what would you say y you are better than at Tiga, and Tiga is perhaps better than you at? Better in any regard? Because, um, most best, best at, at fighting. Um, that's the big problem for my bot, I think. I, I always hate the movement of when I, when I try to code some bots or something. Because there are so many edge cases to consider. And that, that's not fun for me. Yeah, I can totally get that. Economically, I think, 
early game, my bot m maybe a bit faster, but it had some fighting now with Gaia, so I don't know. Gotcha. I'm going to adjust some audio here, it's a bit off. Just looking at your economy, um, there's definitely a lot of inactive creeps, a lot of creeps not yeah, uh, being because, used. Uh, the, it's Gaia has two remotes spotting in the south, yeah. uh, which he had recently conquered, yeah, so yeah. my creeps are Just waiting there. We did a suicide and from the creeps spawning takes some time. Mm -hmm. So the creeps are waiting there. Yeah. And I, I can imagine a scenario where a bot might optimize for that and consider that a bit more, but it's hard. It's really hard to do that. Uh, they, they will go and uh, take soon, I think, but... Uh, uh, taking and fighting so soon, or the early game, is not good for everyone, normally. Yeah, because it's a free-for-all, right? So you've got, if you're fighting with gear, even though gear's a top player and you might be slowing gear down, you've got Tiga over on the right who's expanding his economy, who is preparing to be able to kill you, essentially. Um, I, I've adjusted your audio, so that should be a bit better. Sorry about that. Uh, Rob says, yeah, he doesn't have relaying for his creeps, for his haulers. So that's that's a shame, but it's still very impressive how good his economy is. I'm going to check over on my bot because I think I have some bugs. Um, Viking, how are you doing? How's your bot? Um, my room planning completely crashed, Ooh. but I'm trying to recover it. That's scary. It's a little bit of a cozy room. Uh, you're yeah. looking at mine or Vikings? Vikings. Mm. I'll I'm go check on cozy room. It's not a lot of neighbors either. Okay, so yeah. hopefully I'll do pretty well early. And then my butt will probably jump off the cliff later on. Because <laughs> it's not... Yeah. Yeah, just focusing on the early eco right now. I find having an early game is impressive and it takes effort, but uh, getting getting it so your economy can function really well with 10, 20, 30 rooms, that's where it gets hard. Or even, even with 5 or, or more. Because you have to funnel your resources to certain rooms to upgrade them. You have to decide how much you want to invest into defense for new expansions. You have to figure out how many or, or what boosts you're making and in what rooms. Um, and then you have to say, with source keeper rooms, you have to decide which ones you want to go and harvest to make sure you have all the minerals you need. It just becomes so much more complicated as your RCL, your room count, your GCL, as it increases. Right, looks I'm like Shu has spawning creeps now, so it looks like Shibdib is the only bot that's not actually online and running yet. Damn. There are did. a couple chatters mentioning that um, the guests are very quiet, just so you are, are aware, Marvin. Yeah, thanks. I think it's better now, but I'll, I'll increase it a bit more. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to a different view while I try to fix this bug. Um, so this will automatically go around to different rooms and check out how they're doing. There's a bit of a visual bug with the, the names up there. Sorry about that, but I'll... I'll fix that later. So the error I'm getting is it's of oh didn't mean to cover that. So this is um, this is actually my first bot arena, and something I was wondering from others that have done these before is how long do the bot arena events typically last? Well, yeah, I said at the start, it's it's usually a week or two, and it really depends because if, oh, we've got Tiga right here, perfect. If Tiga, you know, gets his economy going, isn't too hampered early on by fighting with other players, if he's able to get his six rooms up with his, his boosts and his labs, then it's very easy for him to just wipe the whole map in, say, a week. But sometimes, you know, sometimes he has a lot of conflict. One time he spawned next to Saurus, and that really slowed him down because there's a lot of fighting in those remotes and other people get to expand while he has to deal with that. And eventually Saurus was killed, I, I think. But um, uh, Tega was so slowed down by that that he wasn't able to kill everyone. Yeah, I think it ended up with a Gear and Clarkock and 
Ortega sort of fight, and maybe Clark Oak died, but I'm, I'm pretty sure the two of them, Tiga and Gear, were left over, neither of them dying. It looks like Tiga's winning in this remote battle, uh, which is expected. When I fix this bug, I'll be able to to discuss more. So, Adnum, Ad, Admon, um, how's your bot going? What improvements have you made over the last few weeks or last few months since the last bot arena that has made it more competitive? Yeah, so so far it's it's looking good as far as um, in terms of like nothing's crashing or anything yet. Mm -hmm. But this is the first bot arena I've participated in actually, so. I don't have um, very high expectations. I just, you know, really my goal is I hope I'm not the first knock to be knocked out. Um, and um, the features I've been working on most recently to prepare for this was, I already had some auto attack code, but most of my auto attack code was originally developed um, with shard one in mind where I have a bunch of RCL eight rooms and I have access to a lot of boosts and stuff like that. So really like my auto attack code was more um, developed for facilitating like high level attacks and less so for low level fights. And so I spent some time going through and updating my systems to um, try to gauge when, you know, there might be good opportunities to launch an attack um, from a lower level room using unboosted creeps and kind of changing some of my strategies with that in mind, like um, using quads, for example. Um, and so that's been kind of the main focus is trying to launch lower level attacks. And I also have been working on um, adding remote harassment for really the first time. Um, uh, yeah, so nice. the last couple of weeks I implemented a harassment module and I basically made it with kind of two strategies in mind um either trying to harass a, a remote um that another player is operating too close to my base when mm -hmm. i want to attempt to take it over as well as trying to launch harassment as a precursor to launching a full attack so before sending in an auto attack um trying to harass all the remotes around another player's base to try to drain their energy and um, kind of, you know, get them preoccupied before launching a full-scale attack on their room. Wow, yeah, you've been busy. That's a lot. I think that's a really good idea to make sure your enemy is economically weakened before you go in for the, the kill. So that's great. That's a really good idea. Yeah, it actually happened to me in Season 5, where before my rooms were attacked, they were harassed, and I, I really saw how effective that um, strategy is. Um, so I definitely took note of that and was busy kind of incorporating that element into my own code base after Season 5 ended. Gotcha, nice. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that a lot from Tiga, obviously. Um, and one thing I really like that he does is once he's taken a remote and he's got his creeps there, and they're kind of just not doing anything because they don't really have anything to do. They're just, you know, making sure you don't remote. When they're almost dead, they run into the room and waste tower energy as you try to kill them, or defenders as you need to kill them. Um, because obviously you can't just let a, a creep walk around your room and and fight. Um, and Tiga has no use for them anymore. So it's a great use of just uh, expended remote creeps. Remote yeah, I saw harassing. that exactly. It, it seemed like once the, the creeps that were harassing had less than 100 ticks left to live, they would kind of just go and try to face tank the towers and, and try to absorb some of the energy from the room. That's That was a pretty creative um, feature. And I think even when the room is safe moded, he was still doing the same thing, kind of just knowing that, well, you know, it doesn't matter. This this creep's almost dead anyway, so might as well try to use it for, for something. Yeah, exactly. Well, I want to get to that at some point. I'm a bit behind on combat code. It's it's probably my least favorite part of the game, even though it's a pretty big part of the game, because it's sort of just not easy to test. 
I mean, we've got our automated testing system where we've got a performance server and we just run a command and it runs a series of server instances and tests the bot against each other, like test multiple different versions or test the same bot in different rooms. And it's really good for testing economy because you can see all those statistics and you can see what works best. But for combat, it's a lot harder because how do you really judge how effective a combat has been in a in a macro level. So I find that. What do you find is a good way to test your combat code? Um, for me, I would say um, testing against invader cores and other automated bots on a private server has been pretty useful for launching attacks. Um, Testing defense is a little bit harder because you either need to coordinate with someone near you and with the speeds on the live MMO servers, it's a little bit um, kind of, it's kind of slow to yeah. do that testing on the live servers. So what I've been doing that I found was kind of an effective way to, um, to do it at least was I kind of do fake attacks on my rooms by placing flags mm -hmm. and I basically have my, um, you know, I have a module called DEF CON that responds to enemy attacks in my rooms and I basically just hooked up some, some manual flags into the system to kind of be seen as um, hostile threats and so my code will respond to the flags in the same way spawning defenders, spawning repairers, um, commandeering units in the room to um, kind of change their their role temporarily to deal with the, the attack. Um, and then, you know, it's kind of a, a cheesy um, technique, to be honest, but I found that moving the flags around was also nice because then I can emulate, um, you know, being attacked in a base from multiple points in the room and making sure that my defenders kind of spread out and manage um, those different points of attack. Um, so yeah, I've kind of found that that some flags was was helpful for being able to just test by myself mm -hmm. um, without having to coordinate with others or you know um, establish kind of a a testing ground and use you know real resources towards those or real credits towards testing that combat. Yeah, that's really awesome. I know Cyrus is. I think Cyrus mentioned this that he's had problems testing his quads and defense because he he tests against himself and that has the the issue of of course your code might do something that other bots don't so a tiga quad might attack you in a very different way than your own quads will and that can expose um problems in your defense that you wouldn't have seen otherwise so i think mm -hmm. that's a good strategy but I feel like at a at an upper level that might cause the same kind of issue as Cyrus has mentioned there. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I could see that having having a real opponent to to attack you and and test your defense against is is probably going to yield the best results, especially if you get you know multiple tests with different players and more play styles, but. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, it might even be that this event can can provide some of that as long as we can gather good notes and and things to to uh to note for improvement for later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's such a good testing environment. I find Scrape's Warfare Championship is better but also different. So Scrape's Warfare Championship for those who don't know, it's a usually a t 1 v1 team so you've got a team of five people a team of five people and you can update your code at any point unlike in bot arena so in bot arena you can't update your code you just plug in your code and then after 20k ticks you just can't edit it at all but in scripts warfare championships you can do that updating so it's different in that you can you know fix your bugs as they happen but I find a lot of players end up doing a lot of manual intervention in their attacks in that kind of that's kind of a bad trade-off for testing your automatic code. I don't know, it's diff different environments for sure. Hmm. It looks like we've got a little bit of action on the screen with uh, Gear and Saurus um, going at it over a remote. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, we had it before. And Captain Muscle tries to farm one of my remotes with some worker creeps. 
think there's been some conflict on both sides for Sora. It's there's just nasty, but with Mad Dog Mike as well. As well. Uh, costs some energy and time for my bot. Uh, take it right up Normally, again. Oh, yeah, this would be the time where my bot's upgrading more to get to a, the next controller level. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of on what Tega just said, you know. Um, he said what's what's hard is doing economy while fighting, and that's a great point because uh, it kind of messes with your spawning planning. So if, if you do something like what Kelgen does where you'll, you'll plan your next few thousand ticks of spawning and then you start getting attacked, well, it's kind of hard to, to make sure you're spawning all your creeps at an efficient timing and making sure you have enough of each kind of creep because the attacking is very dynamic you know at one point you might need two squads two squads and that takes away from your haulers for your harvesters it can be a real mess uh what do you do you agree with that sars yeah in every case if and most probably if you just spawn some workers and then uh, enemies in the remote then they can do nothing and need to wait till fighters are spawned and so on yeah, and I, I think this is a good case in point for that entire concept because right now, uh, Lord Grey the Root, Lord Grey the Root's creeps are not giving up on that remote, and so Tig is having to c maintain a combat force there. And because of that, you can see how far ahead of him Gear is on the uh, leaderboard already. Yeah, good point. It's it's a new worse than <laughs> Yeah, I think the stats. Hmm, I'm not sure if they're up yet. It looks like they sort of are, yeah. Okay. So let me get those okay, set up. Real some quick. graphs. Yeah, graphs. So. No, oh, not that one. Where is it? Um, what's going on over here? So we've got. Oh, shoes in this, right? I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm interested to see what Shu brings. So Shu's a new competitor, and they used a bunch of different open source bots, but they expand on them. They improve them, and they're pretty good at improving them. They worked with me on the international for a, a, a little bit, making some pull requests and improving parts of the code. And the improvements they made were clearly very good, um, and they they made the bot more efficient. So I'm excited to whatever they've done to this this version of whatever bot they're using. I'll have to look more at it because it looks it looks like a pretty meta version of a bot. So it, it might even be a fork of the international. Looks like it is going for that standard fast filler, so not too much information to be had there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so we've got GCL graph over here. Let me move it. Are from these... Uh are these creep names uh, international type? I feel like they're similar to recent international versions. I'm going to take a look. I'm still trying to fix some bugs on my end, so it's, it's I'm multitasking a lot here. Let's see. For some reason, it thinks I have 900 uh, energy capacity for spawning. Uh, I can tell you that's not the case. <laughs> hmm. More fighting between Cyrus and Gear. You guys are spending a lot on fighting, and you're fighting in multiple remotes. It's chaotic. Yeah, not good for my bot. Because it tends... I changed something, so it tends to be more passive at the start. Not to waste so much. Mm. Yeah, I know. It gets pretty aggressive as it gets more economy and stuff. Uh, and Gears? Yeah, gears? but at the end, it's too passive. Yeah. Well, yeah, sometimes. I think, if you saw their gears creeps, gears attack creeps were kind of weird. They had a lot of move. They were very specialized, clearly, to attack on swamps. Oh, oh. <laughs> Over here we've got a nightshade having some problems with the source. So they're probably thinking that this is a valid position when it really isn't. Mm. It's kind of a strange bug. I, I'm not sure how that would surface. Gear already building roads. Interesting. Usually you don't see people upgrade and build at the same time. Hmm. I don't know. What do you guys think of that? Do you think it's reasonable to try to do both at the same time? 
I think it's definitely reasonable. I think quite a few yeah. players do so too. But if you're building, it depends too on whether you've got the dedicated upgraders yet. But early on, it makes sense to have workers that switch between upgrading and building, right? But mm -hmm. later on, as your creep height, your your creep body um, gets more specialized, it makes more sense to have uh, dedicated upgrader builds that have more work and less carry parts. And so at that point, it, you know you you start to balance a little bit more, building enough builders to get your construction done, and then once you have enough builders and you've got energy to spare, you might as well start throwing some of that towards upgrading. But this is still pretty early for that. Yeah, uh, it looks like these are pretty specialized bodies from Gear. And if you if you are uh, yeah, divining from the names, the UP is the start of each of these upgraders, and then BL is the start of each of these builders. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing he's already got the specialized groups going at uh, RCL two here, and turning the corner towards RCL three almost. Yeah, that's yeah if you wanna. Besides, if you wanna see a strange bug of my bot, uh, I my horn has tried to walk through an enemy room because. They, they don't need to, but they would have a shorter way through an enemy room, and there's some movement or route back. I uh, think it's one thing that which stops my bot. I don't know if you can show it on the map. I'll try to show it. Um, but they try to walk through uh, Mad Dog Mike's room to get a remote which is next to him, because the way through his room would be much shorter. Uh, it's some of the edge cases because it's it's the terrain layout that they try to move there. Yeah, that's that is bad because I can end up the rooms in at the start of the of the game. All the it's rooms two, are in safe two rooms mode. Rooms above mine, north from mine. There's a room next to yeah. Metok Mike where my creeps try to haul through his room. Yeah, it looks like they're going through here. It's a shame. And gear here winning, even though they've got the less efficient bodies on their attackers. I mean, these rooms aren't that, all that swampy. They could certainly go without all the extra move and, and be more efficient, but gear doesn't seem to care. Yeah, my, my problem is my because of the other book, Buck, which solves my book, but it has not enough energy to really get a fighting crew up. Yeah. It will change with next... RCL, I think, because then it doesn't need so many remotes, but it will take some time to get resolved. Hmm. I was going to say about um, the dilemma on hey, you're very the Wow, you're very quiet. Oh, uh, better? oh it's not better. <laughs> Maybe I'll just move the mic closer to my face. Nice. Is that any better? Yeah, that's much better. Rob just hit RCL3. Wow. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, for second player taking my other remote. <laughs> Is Trap... What's Trap up to? It doesn't look like he's doing much. Uh-oh. Slow motion, what's going on with slow motion? Um, yeah, here night, it's it's a shame the minimap was sort of covering it, but uh, Nightshade was getting kind of destroyed by Captain Muscles. He's going very aggressive against, on that remote, even though it's not really that efficient for him. Like, there's other, other remotes he could probably be going for. <sighs> it's annoying that the minimap's covering that, I hope it switches. I had the minimap as transparent before, but it didn't really work. And there's not really all that much space to, to put it. It's annoying that it's a, uh, a wide map really messes with the view. <laughs> I love Cyrus's room here. There's just, there's so many creeps and not many of them are doing. Things. I had kicked muscles in the top remote recently. He's, he's he's just going crazy on that. It doesn't look like Nightshade has any remote abandonment code, which is not going to end well. And Gear here just killing more and more. Hmm. 
I've got it. Hmm. Yeah, Cyrus is room here. We've just got so many hollers. Still at RCL two. It's just. It, it's. I would probably yeah, call that a bug. Slowed. Very slow because second player take the top remote, which is free now. Yikes. So the haulers will be out soon. Yeah. But very bad start for me this time. They, they got... want to work. They want to go. They want to go remote <laughs> so badly. <laughs> They're even dying for it. I I made my abandonment very high this round for remotes, because I don't really want them to be. You know, ending up not like Nightshade and not like yours, where maybe a bit too aggressive trying to keep those remotes and and like Nightshade, just keep harvesting that remote no matter how many of your creeps are dying. It's annoying that you can see though that Captain Muscles is he's um he's just staying around this source and killing all the creeps trying to harvest from it. Oh, now we see Modus. What's going on with Modus here? He builds roads so early. It's it's weird. And he did, you'll notice he's very kind of off meta in that he doesn't have a fast filler, at least not immediately. Yeah, I don't think he ever builds a fast filler. Which, um, speaking of, uh, slow motion ghost, you have a very interesting approach to fast filling. You use your towers, you're kind of... Um, it's not the normal shape that most people do fast fillers with. Do you wanna, and you also use a lot of walls too, which is, you know, very off meta. If you're, if you're here, if you're able to, do you wanna speak on that? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, it's better now for sure. Uh, um, so yeah, so my fast filler, I think it's just oddly shaped because I wanted to incorporate it in my existing layout um, without disrupting that too much. Um, the, I quite liked having my extensions in like a star shape from my uh, storage right. so that my hauler could do uh, a full kind of fill eight extensions in one trip and then go back to the storage to make it the minimum amount of time to kind of access all of those um, and I wanted to keep that quality while adding in the fast filler so I just kind of cut chunk out of that existing layout and put in that fast filler layout that I've got um, although it's not started up too well now it should come on online later um, and then yeah the walls is just I decided it's not something I would normally do um, I think I only added it last season but it was just um, mm. having a wall shell around my rampart my normal rampart um, kind of layer um, and the rationale behind that was just uh, block any ranged mass attack which obviously won't damage the walls but it will damage the rampart layer um, and it also just gives a little bit more time having a, a cheap outer layer still gives you a, a kind of a double thickness which um, effective, effectively means if a quad wants to walk through it has to destroy four um, buildings rather than two um, unless it obviously squeezes through the gap so there's pluses and minus to it but I thought because because the walls obviously don't decay, um, it's just that initial investment that you need to put into them rather than continuous upkeep, I thought it was worth the, the costs. Mm -hmm. I can understand some of the rationale behind that because, yeah, walls are pretty good at reducing the effectiveness of ranged mass attack. And quads, you know, uh, a two by two of creeps that work and move together to attack, they're really meta nowadays. And for good reason, they're, they're pretty efficient at killing but do you what do you think about using alternating like like checkerboard walls or just you know every other wall instead of a full layer of of wall shell have you considered that at all i like to call those dragon's teeth dragon's teeth yeah that's yeah that's a good way that's much better um yeah i don't know i i guess that it would still uh yeah, probably equivalent. I mean, I, 
I guess it depends how many hips you've got. Um, the the other thing is dragon teeth get a bit funny when you're placing them on on the corners. Mm. I found um, so getting an algorithm to do it that looks nice as well <laughs> is is a bit challenging. Otherwise, you, here and there you'll have doubles or you'll have have a a, a gap of two, um, and that bothered me. <laughs> yeah, that's the main reason, really. That makes sense, yeah. And then you've also got stuff like remote paths going out. You have to make sure they go through the dragon teeth, um, which is ironically harder, I imagine, than to make it go through that shell of walls because you have to account for going through the, the gaps, not making a gap of two so that they're effectively worthless. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's quite easy to just um, use a cost matrix when you're putting in the, in the initial walls. Um, and making sure that you're putting a gap in so that you can get to all of your exits basically but um it, yeah I, yeah totally spot on it looks like my bots were covered now from the the bug fix that i just pushed so i'm gonna i'm gonna go back over to this view uh, 11 yes so so did this um would this bug not have been picked up on your automatic um, testing, or do you think it's a room-specific problem? Uh, I made some slight modifications for Bot Arena, um, so that probably caused it. And then there's another thing that the the WebAssembly module sometimes breaks when it's on a certain server. It's very weird, and I don't know how to fix it. It's 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 very strange because the WebAssembly module should supposedly work anywhere. Um, I don't see why it would be different on a different server, but it, it is. Hmm, taking a bit of while to load this room. What's the rationale for your WebAssembly code? Right, so the WebAssembly code has two purposes. So the main purpose is, I, I'm going to switch view, this is much too laggy. Uh, the rationale behind it is, the main thing is that it's for the collaborator. So the collaborator is a way for me to control other users of the bot. So if someone spawns in on MMO with, it's called Commibot, that's what the bot's called for those who don't know. And if they spawn in on MMO and start attacking other players, attacking noobs, bullying them, being just an all around bad person, then I will, I'm gonna switch view, this isn't working. Then I'll just kill them or I'll stop them, I'll like delete their spawn or something. Um, and it's, it's funny, and it's very powerful, but it also serves a good purpose, because otherwise I'd have to make more of the bot inaccessible to people, and say make the quad code in part not public, and that would be a shame. So it's nice to be able to keep the code public while being able to stop uh, bad users of it. And then the other purpose is WebAssembly code is generally much faster. So your utility functions, wow, I just crashed. That's weird. So your utility functions will, let me start this up again, that's weird. Nobody come to me with fur receipts on, on the faster claim, I, by the way. <laughs> that'll, that'll, be, that'll be a contested point until the end of time, I think. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. Um, I am very confident that it is faster because of tests I and other people I've talked to have done. I would um, think in isolation it would be faster, but I think one of the problems is if you're having to move stuff in and out of that environment, you get delays because of that, don't you? Yeah, that's a very yeah. good point. So you want to make sure that your delays aren't greater than just running it in, in JavaScript. So making your utility, not, not all of your utility functions, but having uh, some utility functions like, um, like let's say your flood fill algorithm for your base planner, having that in WebAssembly will make it faster. I mean, it should make it faster. <laughs> like maybe 50% maybe faster or something like that. And you might say, oh, for, it's, for, it's just base planning, right? I don't, why do I care about faster base planning? But you use flood fill for other things, like you'll use it in combat, you'll use it in defense, um, you might use it in your remote stuff to make it a bit faster. Um, so I do think it really has some use, but it's it's definitely a sort of hyper-optimization. It's not necessarily all that needed to make your bot a top bot. It helps. Oh, 
I think um, I think stability is a, a key factor in determining how good a bot is as well, and probably the sacrifices in stability that you get from trying to implement WebAssembly, and at least from what I've found from whenever I've tried to use it, um, hasn't been worth it. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, I always, or the, the bot I put in, always underperforms in bot arena and even Screeps Warfare Championship because it is not stable. There's always bugs. And that's part of just how I code. That's part of just how multiple people working on a bot ends up making the bot, you know, inherently less stable. But the, you could make an argument that the WebAssembly definitely plays into it not working as um, consistently. It's a trade-off. I like your room here. It looks really good. So we've got reservations starting from Gear and Rob. Yeah. Rob's already getting his bunker shell down. Oh, oh, okay. So he is going for a bunker. Interesting. Hmm. Um, okay, let me get the stats up again. We've got... So Tig is, even with the fighting, and I don't think Rob's doing any fighting at all, or very limited fighting if he is with Shu. I don't think Rob has had to fight it with Shu at all, no. Gotcha. Then... Maybe with Mirror a little in the south. Ah, right. Good point. No, but, actually, it doesn't look like... But Tiga's here, got four reservations up. He's... Even with the fighting with Lord Greyweather, he's gonna overtake Rob in, in GCL already. So that's pretty... It just shows the capabilities of Tigabot. Meanwhile... Yeah, it looks like Lord Greyweather has given up on that remote, so Tiga's looking uncontested at this point. Wow, okay crazy man i need a better computer it's hard for me to cast um i mean this program i'm using is really good because it's ironically much faster than the client but the client's always very laggy on fast ticks it just can't render it very fast it's a shame to be fair i think i also saw that you have like 30 tabs open oh more much more than that much more than that i have tabs scrolling on so it's maybe 200 300 tabs I have two tabs open, and it's still laggy enough that I'm uh, incentivized to do my viewing through the app on my phone. Looks like Snow Goose's bot has gotten unstuck. It was kind of not doing anything for a bit there, but now it's back to doing its normal, normal thing of upgrading extremely fast with no remotes. Yeah, it's no no remotes, but it's still a strong economy. Although, yeah, because he was slowed down initially, I doubt he's very high in the... Eh, he's at 30k almost. That's pretty good. Yeah, Snow Goose's strategy, the, the base strategy that Snow Goose uses is very unique and very effective, especially against kind of the usual quad meta, um, the, the kind of random splay of walls that only get repaired kind of selectively and unpredictably. Uh, it does pretty well against most people's attack. Um, procedures mm -hmm. but it's kind of like a gimmick right because if you have the code to to get through that then it gets very easy it's not like you have to break down a bunch of ramparts or anything right right it's it's really about like the energy expenditure to take it down versus the energy expenditure he needs to do to take it to keep it alive uh and and it's usually not going to be worth it to to uproot those rooms versus spending energy on your own rooms and upgrading and getting further ahead yeah exactly and here we can see Tiga, he builds his containers before the roads, which is, it makes a lot of sense because roads are a fairly large investment. And then over at Snow Goose, we've got the stationary creeps upgrading a lot, using the spawn um, to, to transfer energy in a very fun way. Um, but of course, the meta strategy is more efficient. Gear significantly further ahead of Snow Goose, and it will stay that way unless something bad happens. Fighting between Trepidemius and Gear is ongoing. It's interesting. Um, I think Trep is kind of showing Gear's faults in preferring that more move and less attack. So, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how that goes out. And then Rob here is fighting with Mirror a bit. So it looks like that's just a scout, but he's being pretty aggressive. <laughs> it's one scout and he's got three creeps trying to kill it. Cyrus is saying he's 2,000 ticks behind normal performance. I'm not sure. Where does that number come from? How do you how do you determine that? 
because rooms are very yeah, different. My, I know. Um, I have a bug uh, with uh, remote planning. You see, I have two two rooms above my room that are remote, which I could directly access, but my haulers calculate a direct path with, which goes through an enemy room, so they are stuck on the border. Right. Because yeah. I don't want to enter. I don't know if it's visible somewhere. That's which uh, makes my boat slow. Well, there is some fighting and here it's now. It's not a quick fix to get this now. Yeah. Do you think you'll have it done so before the lockdown? It's a longer time. You, you can see in E2 and 5. Let me drag that over. So E2 and 5 you're saying we've got. Right, so over here, yeah, there's definitely fighting going on. <laughs> and I'd love to take a look, but I don't think the room will load very quickly. Yeah, you're saying you're going through his room to get to that. And, hmm, that sucks. Yeah, it's not fighting, it's it's a bug with the remote next, because the, the, the remote planner says the remote is okay, because there's a free path, but the callers want to go through the enemy room, so... Mm -hmm. So they're useless, <coughs> kind of. Do you use cached, uh, cached remote paths for your haulers? No, no the problem lies, I, I, I think I know where the bug is, mm -hmm. because there are several layers of route planning, and there's something off between the route, the hauler plan, and the general thinking which remote my boat takes. I so see. my boat thinks the remote is okay, because the hauler could get there without going through the enemy room, but they, when they calculate the route, it goes through the room, which isn't catched. So, mm -hmm. yeah, remote planning is really difficult to do at a at a, I guess, no edge case level where you don't have yeah. any any it issues. Resolve when I get next yes RCL because then when I can claim remotes I don't need that one it's too far away but right. uh, it will take time to get to three mm -hmm. hmm. looks like we're seeing roads from Rob's bot and Tigga's bot and gear yeah I think I think from gear it's interesting to see the different strategies that the bots use. Uh, Rob's bot obviously just making the rampart shell as soon as it really can and should. Uh, I think the other bots are, are paying attention to when they have their safe mode until and not really bothering to worry about building ramparts to maintain until then. Yeah. From here we've got Captain Muscles. He's very aggressive, just always always attacking Mad Doc or a Lego Nick. Oh, it's a shame Shibdib is not... the bot is not functioning. Hopefully they fix that. Um, and then Night Dragon has. They're still they're still getting kind of beaten up by Captain Muscles, but it's getting better. Like clearly they have an economy going. Um, meanwhile, me over here looks like it's good remoting going on. Um, maybe a bit inefficient with probably over harvesting sources. I don't think it can keep that much going but we'll see not that many inactive creeps it looks like though so i'm happy with that are the bread lines going to make an appearance marvin that's the thing that people want to know the bread lines should not make an appearance i think i've completely removed the bread lines i'm pretty happy with it yeah because um the main thing with the bread lines was the way we were distributing haulers was based on how we were spawning haulers so we would pool haulers, but we would also tell them... It's not loading, is it? But we would also tell them, go where um, go where the path distance is determining income. So if a harvester is harvesting 10 energy a tick, and we have a path length of 150, it'll be like, we need this many hauler parts over this time period. And it'll distribute based on that. And obviously that has problems because given it enough time, that's not a very accurate way to determine um, how much hauling parts you need. Because we've got de decay of the container, we've got, say, the 
harvester arrives there late and doesn't fully harvest the sores, stuff like that. So you eventually end up with way too many haulers than it needs, and it's like, oh yeah, that's fine. We needed that many, but you definitely didn't. So now we fixed that. We completely, I completely rewrote the whole distribution system, and now it's a sort of credit system. So it estimates how much energy there will be in the future, and it distributes based on that. And that sounds similar, maybe, but it's it's very different because it's determined based on like very knowable values at the present and not it's not a static value either so if an invader comes in and kills that harvester sure there might be a temporary overflux of remote haulers but that can be reconciled very easily and it's not a permanent issue <laughs> if that made any sense okay yeah so so still essentially kind of calculating from like leading indicators of like what do we think we're investing as opposed to because my, my bot essentially does exclusively lagging indicators it just watches how idle the haulers have been over the last i think five thousand six or so uh, and basically just scales based on hey how have, how have they been doing versus how do i think they're going to do so i'd be interested in hearing you know your thoughts and others thoughts on you know when it's appropriate to pre-calculate versus watch how it's going interesting i like that um we have no lagging indicators uh, maybe you could call the system a bit of a lagging indicator but i don't think so it's more just that um, it gives a time period for how much is needed. Um, Saurus, if you're if you're there, how much? What do you, what do you do to determine remote need? What exactly remote need for hauler or? Yeah, for haulers. Yeah, it's calculated. I I know all the paths, which are to every source. I say I save them, so I can calculate uh, how much hauler I need. For the energy, mm -hmm. yeah. so so my bot spawns the needed hauler for all remotes and sources which are planned, and as soon as there's a um, creep with work parts, of course. So it's it's ne it uses the path to to calculate how many remotes it can spawn for. So it only spawns worker and takes remotes for which it has enough sp spawn capacity to spawn them. Okay, yeah. But then you have hauler pooling, right? What hauler? Um, so do your... Can your haulers change what remote they respond to? Yes, they respond to every remote. They can change. Also, if one is attacked, they can go to another. Uh, so Despite some fact, if some remotes have roads and some have no roads, um, it spawns different haulers uh, with more move for the remotes which, which have the roads not finished yet. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, Rob mentioned this. He said E12N9 has a little fire for remoting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure how that happened. <laughs> Uh, I, I believe I had fixed all of this. I guess it just determined that these remotes are very contested and it kind of wants to avoid all of them. So it decided to go all the way out there, but clearly that's <laughs> way too far. That's that's absurd. We've got, we've got Tigga doing some cheeky remoting right next to Modus's room there, that's to true. south of Tigga's room. I don't think Modus was remoting it, but it's, it's interesting to see that room <laughs> reserved, but the one that's closer to Tigga not reserved and not harvested. <laughs> That's silly, yeah. Yeah, clearly even Tiga has work to be done to improve his bot. Uh, Unless it's intentional, maybe he's trying to shut out Modus's um, ability to harvest that room. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I would love to hear Tiga give a give an explanation for his remote selection because it's it's always it's always interesting to me to watch. It's always weird, but yeah, as, as you point out, like maybe it makes sense. Maybe there's reason for it. For sure. Modus is very... I don't think Modus remotes until RCL3, so that might be just benign. Um, so over here, we've got admin. So I think the way admin's approaching low RCL is all of the creeps have the same parts, and they just um, do whatever needs to be done. They build, they upgrade, stuff like that. He's 
he's away right now, but he'll be back, and we can ask him about that, I hope. Invader Core. I'm back now. Ooh. Oh, awesome. Nice. Um, yeah, so is that is that kind of how you approach things early? That is currently, and I was actually uh, taking notes on... Um, I want to improve that because I used to have this, you know, I call it the lazy strategy, but I used to have this lazy, lazy strategy all the way up until basically RCL4 when a storage was built. And then I would start to spawn more specialized roles. And I brought that up a little bit to um, as soon as the tower is built at RCL3, I kind of switch gears into using specialized roles um, and, you know, having dedicated uh, source miners and haulers. Um, but I want to bring that up even even further because I'm, you know, I'm just seeing across the board it's a lot more effective to basically start that at RCL1, but um, I at least want to pair it back to RCL2. Like right now, as soon as the five extensions are built, I should really use that as a trigger to um, to switch over to, to the specialized um, miners versus haulers and, and have some upgraders that just stay parked and, and upgrade. Um, yeah. Cause yeah, I, I recognize it's not really that efficient to have all these expensive work parts um, moving around, especially going all the way to a remote source and back home. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, they're all just the Swiss army knife right now. And they're, they're waiting for that tower to be built before they kind of change directions. Gotcha. That's interesting. Um, here we've got Yonar's trying to bring in a quad for remotes, for remote defense, which I, I'll never get behind that. I don't think quads belong in a environment outside of towers. Um, it's much better, I think, to just have melee heal duos and um, ranged attack singletons. Because the main thing with the quads is that they can handle towers so well, but you don't really need to handle all that healing with, with remote stuff. And it's a lot more dynamic, too. You want to be able to move your creeps around a lot more and use your melee creeps to kind of get in front and block while you use your ranged attack and heal creeps to get behind the get behind those that those duos and to kill so it's yeah i'll never get behind that yeah well so i i, I don't disagree with that i think um the main challenge <clears throat> excuse me with non-quad creeps is coordinating them properly mm -hmm. um if you have lots of indi individual creeps getting them to fight uh at the same time and not be single file is pretty challenging and uh with quads i feel like i've already kind of coded my quads to uh i mean they they have to all each creep within the quad has to be coordinating and healing and whatever the other creeps in the in the quad that code is already written my one of my main i would say one of my uh most restricted resources in scrapes is developer time so having this quads work um uh, i mean I, I could i technically the fact that i use quads for remote defense uh is a is a placeholder honestly my all of my remote mining code has been implemented since after my uh what i would call my glory days of scrapes i honestly have not done much coding in the past couple of years uh, but um, I haven't had a ton of incentive to change that. I think the quads work pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like looks like my bot successfully defended that remote uh, or claimed it back. Actually, it looked like uh, Viking conquered it, and then I think my bot conquered it back. And I think my bot might even still be RCL two. So that was an RCL two defeating an RCL three there in the remote. And I think the fact that there was a quad there was a big reason for it wow that's impressive yeah i i agree with you on coordination it's so hard to coordinate well even with trap trepidemius who i think has really good singletons that that work well together um it's still not perfect and a quad makes it a lot closer to perfect even though it will probably never be perfect developer time for sure that's a that's another big that's another big thing yeah, I, I also use quads for my remote defense, um, just because I, I, especially at the lower levels, when you've got so little parts per creep, it makes sense to, um, I think, bring 
a few creeps to the party. Um, and obviously, if they're splitting up, then you're going to lose the benefit that, that close range heal gives you. Um, so I think it does make a lot of sense, although you do lose, like, say, the maneuverability. Um, it's nice to have the option to go into a quad, um, but also you can just have a, a group of four creeps turn up, go to quad when they're near enemies or when they're not going to more of a single file or, or swarm formation. Yeah. I, I should also add that without having a bot that's doing very fancy math about whether or not it's worthwhile to do an engagement, um, remotes are incredibly lucrative, and I've, I've found that with my approach of kind of take the remote at all costs, um, it, it seems to be very important. Even, even if there's a cheaper way to win a remote, that's going to result in the remote being conquered a hundred ticks, a uh, hundred ticks more slowly. That's an extra two thousand energy, I, I believe, mm. um, that I'm potentially missing out of, missing out on, which is more than the price of that whole quad by a lot. So, yeah, yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> Over here, we've got I think the same problem that uh, Cyrus was having, where. Azpov was trying to have his creeps move through Yono's room to get to maybe a remote, but they were getting, because obviously you can't fight back in a in a safe-moded room. So Yono was just killing them. Hmm. I like Viking's position here. I think it's really good, because he's not too close to any of the top players, not too close to Cyrus or Gear or Tiga. Um, and even though he's losing fights to you, Yono, He's got a lot of remotes that he can choose from and expand well, into. In fact, maybe. I just won the fight as well. I took the remote back. Yeah, I'm not he, sure he, if he I just take the, the remote back. Well. Ah, didn't nice. get to see. Must, it must have killed the quad. Those are some much, much bigger creeps in there. Although, it looks like my bot will get... I think my bot probably just stopped fighting, seeing that number of creeps in there and being RCL2. Mm. But I think as soon as my bot hits our field three it's gonna throw another quad down there and take it back again she yeah, was my bot will do the same very slowly hmm. yeah i'm not sure what kind of maybe it's their own bot maybe they're using just something they coded themselves but i'm surprised there's no remoting going on that definitely won't carry them very well because snow goose has heavily optimized their economy to work without really the need for remotes as much but if you're just running a fast filler, like the, a lot of the point of the fast filler, of course, is to make it so you can spawn really fast. There's a little bit of remoting going on, but it's, it's very little. <laughs> more more creeps getting killed in Yana's room. I think hmm. a lot of Shu's problem also has been just kind of the swampiness right around that controller there has just kind of... Mm. It, it's just a little bit of a slog for the creeps to get through there with energy, and so I think that's a little bit of... Uh, just the geometry of the room is kind of working against them, though. Yeah, it's a good point. I think it's really hard to plan a room to deal with swamps, like to make sure your fast filler isn't in a bunch of swamps and stuff like that. I think that's really hard to do. I'd like to see someone do it, because I know Tega doesn't deal with that. I don't think Gear does. I know I don't. Hmm. Cyrus, do you? Do you handle that at all? Like, oh, do you? Partly. The start is very slow, of course, because before there are enough roads, swamps are very slow, economy very much down. Mm, yeah. Yeah, there was once was a bot arena it's long ago where Tiger and me were near it, it, to each other and we both had very swampy rooms and we both lost because we, we fought each other but had a very bad economy because of all it was so swampy <laughs> and we crippled each other so much that we had no chance to win. Huh, who ended up winning that one? Oh, I don't know it. Too long ago. Gotcha. It does look like Shu is using a version of Kamibot, yeah. Huh. I thought those creep names looked familiar. Yeah, they are. <laughs> there's no... There's definitely stuff going wrong here, though. There's no fast filler container. Um... 
even though there's a fast filler clearly <laughs> um very little spawning going on because of that because the bot is made to work when there's a fast filler and not really made to work when there isn't one so i don't unless they start building a fast filler at some point i don't think they're gonna do all that well i think they're also using an older version of the bot because i think our creep names are longer now like I think I changed that a while ago. We'll see. Interesting. I just realized that Tega's road builders are doing the whole bucket brigade thing too, not just the haulers. Oh, That's yeah. cool. Yeah, they definitely are. Might as well. They've got carry, right? Mm -hmm. Although the check is probably a little bit costly, but eh. It's worth it. They're probably only... I haven't watched for sure to see if they're doing it with haulers, but I think they're just doing it with each other. Which probably makes it cheaper. Yeah, because if you have it done with haulers, haulers would have a lot more store, and they would kind of waste parts going back and forth and, and, and hauling less than they could. Oh, we got a tower from Saurus. Nice. <laughs> uh... 8,000, uh, well, the, okay, I think we're maybe 2,000 ticks in or something, isn't it? Like, wasn't the start at 2,000 ticks or something? Well, safe mode's down to 11,000 ticks, which means we're mm. about 8,500 ticks in. Gotcha, thank you, okay. Only 200, then. Oh, traffic issue. Oh, no. And it looks like 17 players are now RCL3, so a lot of the, um... A lot of people are kind of catching up to get their first tower up before the safe mode's half over. Yeah, same. Although, way too yeah, slow. Yeah, it's amazing the uh, out kind of average improvement of the average over time. I think it used to be uh, quite common for almost half of the bot arena participants to be struggling to get a tower up before the end of the first safe mode. Wow. And now it's almost the standard to be closing in on RCL4 even. Yeah, or, or even with a storage. Both uh, both gear and Viking are, are around in the corner by like three and a half on RCL, so we're going to have some fours here before we know it. Ah, nice. Meanwhile, I'm stuck here with a wonderful traffic issue. Oh, I thought I had fixed all of these. <laughs> there's only so much you can do when there's like 3,000 lines of traffic management code. You can't debug everything. 3,000 lines? Okay, I'm, I'm probably being a bit exaggeratory, but it's a lot. It's 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 too much, maybe. <laughs> we handle so much. We've got recursive shoving. We've got, like, priority swapping. We've got um, our sort of internal cost matrix for, for move requests. It's a lot. It's It can handle almost anything. I guess that's the benefit. Yep. Cartographer was similar. Yeah, well, it seems to be working pretty well. But does it... Oh, it crashed again. What? Yikes. I gotta... Something's wrong with my version of the capture system, I think. It's not a good sign. Okay, so we're back. Um, oh yeah, okay, this. I really like this. So it's kind of oddly uncommon, but a lot of people don't seem to have multiple reservers early on on their controllers. So they end up just desperately trying to make sure that they have an extra reserver there right before the other one dies. And why not just have multiple? Yeah, I had a res invader core there. So it, the four ones were really needed because the core reserved 1,000 ticks for the invader, so yeah, good we point. need to get that down quickly. Yeah, and that's a good remote too, you don't want to lose that. We've got remote roads coming out here, and another big thing with remote considerations is once you start building your containers and your roads in those remotes, you need to try even harder to maintain that because you've got an investment there. It's not just future income lost, it's an investment on that hasn't been benefited you if, if you lose it. Right. 
Although you don't want to go down the route of the sunk cost fallacy. Yeah, you don't want to go too much, but <laughs> you have to go more. I like this. Um, one thing I've, I've seen Rob do that's really nice is he kind of, he seems to track when creeps, or where creeps were if they if they left the room. So his defenders sort of just sit there if there's nothing else for them to deal with. They just sit by the exit where they last saw a creep, and they just kill them the moment they pop out. It's really nice to see. Yeah, mine, mine follows into other rooms too. But not too far away, not to get lured away. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, fo following that is difficult, and then you have to make sure you don't go too far, and that, that seems like a fair bit to code. I like this. <laughs> slowly, slowly picking him up. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's over. Hmm, I wonder if Modus can dodge all of those. Uh, and if he has a little melee creep. Hmm. Uh, Modus here isn't really considering the path as much. Like, um, usually when people flee, they have like, I want to flee so that I'm safe in 20 ticks. But, oh, uh-oh, it's over. Um, so they wouldn't end up getting stuck in this corner because they'd be like, okay, 20 ticks from now or 20 path steps from now, I will be in that corner. So they would go elsewhere. Or not on the exits either. X. Hmm. I hope my bot... And Okay, Rob, it's not a bread line. That's not what the bot's doing. Um... <laughs> It just had an issue with traffic. It's not... Bread lines would be if... Uh, if it was happening in remotes. In my opinion. That's what I would call a bread line. So the key differentiator here is that in this case, all of your... All of the haulers already had bread, so... Exactly. It's kind of an, in, an inverse bread line. <laughs> yeah, Maybe, an inverse uh, bread line. Sure. A blood, a blood donation, something. A bread drive, or a bread donation line. Because they're giving all their bread to the spawn for it to do stuff. Or, or the builders or the upgraders. Important question though, Marvin, is if you're going to have a tower up before safe mode drops. Oh, easily. Absolutely. Because I remember that was a problem for Kami Bat and Seasonal, so... Well, yeah, but that was that wasn't Kami Bot. That was Buggy Bot. That was the buggiest <laughs> bot in the world, man. I, I thought you were asking from a strategic standpoint if it's worthwhile to build a tower. <laughs> I think you could argue significantly before the safe mode drop. Because I think I think one of you one of you said that somebody already has the tower up. Yeah, Saurus does. I mean, you really should have the tower up by like five thousand ticks, um, if if your bot's fully functioning and and has a good room and isn't fighting too much. I delay mine until the end of the first second. Yeah, is there any reason to actually waste energy on building the tower uh, not. and not target? Like, uh, I think it would be advantageous to try to plan to have your tower pop up right as safe mode is ending. Yeah, that's, that's totally... Well, the, the one... Well, the main thing is, you want... That's, what are you what are you going to build before the tower that will make it more efficient to build that tower later mm -hmm. so well i mean that's just uh extensions maybe yeah that that's just a thousand energy that could go into your or more than a thousand energy how much does it well, you're, you're, you're going to be building it well, you're going to be building it before the safe mode drops anyway so you can either build it early get it out of the way or build it at the last minute but that energy is still going to be allocated to that so the question is, can you use that energy first in a way that makes it more efficient to build that tower more quickly later? Like maybe extensions or good example, I don't know. Yes, I, will, I, I would say my bot at least uh, gets more efficient with higher RCL. So at least um, in terms of go getting from RCL three to RCL four, if I delay my tower, uh, and essentially spend that 5,000 energy uh, on the controller first, that means that I will get to RCL4 
slightly earlier, which means I'll improve my economy slightly earlier. And uh, by the time I get around to putting the power up, ideally, I'm already R scale four with the storage, which uh, which usually makes things uh, economically much easier to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then by that point, five thousand energy is worth less to my bot when I'm R scale four than when I'm R scale three. If that makes sense. Yeah, there's like there's like three main economic changes that happen between RCL 1 and RCL 4. The first thing is the containers and extensions. I, I combine those. Um, so you've got your containers to make it so you can fill extensions and the spawn better. And you've got your extensions so that you can spawn a bit larger creeps. Then at RCL 3 you've got the reservers. So a lot of people don't build roads yet and don't build as many containers because once you get those reservers your remotes become a lot more efficient your closer remotes have more capacity and regeneration of energy. So if you can spawn those larger harvesters and those reservers, then your spawns are more efficient, your creeps are more efficient, your energy income is greater. And then the final one is the storage, which makes resource distribution a lot easier because you can sort of centralize all of your energy and store a lot more of it. So instead of upgrading all the time because you have to because you have to use that energy you can do stuff like upgrading only when your spawn time is kind of not needed as much for remotes so let's say you're harvesting your four remotes or whatever and you have a few extra ticks to spawn an upgrader because adding say another harvester to another remote wouldn't help because you also need reservers and haulers for that so you, you can spend that spawn time on upgraders and use your spawn time and energy more efficiently. And then you can also spawn larger up- upgraders too. So instead of spawning like four small upgraders that use that energy quickly and that sometimes might be a bit inactive, you can just spawn one huge like, you know, eventually you can get up to like a 40 work part upgrader and that uses CPU and energy a lot better. Right, I guess to uh, to sum up what Marvin is saying, I think uh, having a storage allows for a substantial increase in flexibility in terms of balancing energy expenditure and energy income. Uh, because pre-storage, they need to be essentially identical. Post-storage, you can you can mess with the balance of that. Yeah, exactly. yeah you can buffer energy and then spend a bunch of it on something particularly expensive. Mm-hmm. Right. So going back to that tower building decision, uh, being able to hold off on building the tower in order to expedite the storage a little bit, that's uh, just a slight economic boost that uh, yeah. is, is relatively harmless to implement. Yeah, the reserving part is definitely the biggest. The reserving is a huge boost to every part of your economy. And the storage, eh, it can be. I actually find my upgrading goes down on average after the storage is built because the bot is in some ways less efficient and in other ways less uh, focused on putting energy into the upgrading because now it has the ability to attack more and to repair, say, ramparts that it didn't really before. Um, so it kind of it, it hurts the income in some ways, but that can be reconciled with just better management of priorities and better pro better better programming <gasps> what i think it did the join sign when i joined did you hear that <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's why i joined them. hello i'm hello. droid freak so you're the purple and black one at the bottom bottom middle yeah, I'm going to pull up the stream so I can see what you're looking at. Awesome. Not done um, that yet. I'm sort of looking at two things at once because my client is pretty laggy. It's a bit annoying. <sighs> okay, so... Bug fixing time is halfway done. <laughs> yeah. I've got, I've got everything I can I can fix reasonably fixed. Um, you're kind of... I, w- I was hoping... Go ahead. Sorry, I was I was hoping I would have no bugs because uh, my bot has the 
the advantage of very little development. So it's uh, hard for new bugs to show up. But I, I actually did have two bugs separately. Um, unsurprisingly, both related to stuff that I was adding during the season. But mm. I think I got those both resolved. One of them resulted in me not getting any, uh, not having any remotes until about 5,000 ticks in, which was part of the reason for my economic delay Yikes. but I, I managed to get that figured out so should be should be good for now yeah I mean 10,000 yeah 10,000 ticks now 10,000 left still some time to fix um a lot of okay I, I like what Trip's doing here no fast filler but he does have a container so he's able to sort of have some fast filling type stuff there <sighs> looks like Lord Greyweather is able to get some good remoting up because Tig is not messing with him as much anymore um, yep not that it will do much good once we get to the point where Tig is out of attack kicks in but I'm at least able to get a good start yeah, yeah it's, it's surprising to see Tig all the way down in ninth place right now by GCL I wonder how long that'll take to turn around Right. Yeah, that, that investment in roads, I think, is going to start to really pay off. But I think his 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 bot's basically been kind of sinking energy into road infrastructure as opposed to GCL for for the last little bit here. So mm -hmm. he builds a lot at he's at RCL three or four now, three. Yeah, yeah he builds roads at RCL three. Mm -hmm. He also has a tower, right? No. Uh, no, he does not. Okay, nice. Yeah. So what he does with the tower is really nice. He uses it to help with repairing ramparts. It's it's kind of a compensation for bad code, but um, he just uses it to make sure all his ramparts are high enough in hits to be somewhat usable. It's you know, for the ways to use a tower in repairing. It's it's good. It's admissible. Uh, at least he doesn't do it all the time. Like, <laughs> a lot of lower level players will use towers to repair basically anything. Thinking, oh, okay, it has infinite range. My creeps don't have to move there. You know, it's more efficient. But it, it really isn't because with those larger creeps, you can be spending energy always more efficiently. And your CPU can be spent more efficiently when you have those larger repairers. And, um... In some ways, it requires less hauling because you have to haul more energy to the less efficient towers. I don't know, it adds up. Um, looks like there's very little competition between Droid Freak and Slow Motion Ghost over that remote. It's kind of just like a couple of creeps going around and fighting. Yeah, I saw some clashes between our remote defenders, and it looked like mine were doing pretty decent. Oh, nice. Uh, it's sort of a stalemate. You guys are both RCL3, right? So, with extensions? Yeah, now we are. Nice. Yeah, my bot has just given that um, remote up, I think. Oh, okay. Huh. You got I'm a little bit baffled by how efficiently Tega builds roads, <laughs> considering that his, his road builders seem to be just bouncing back and forth between two different sources, harvesting a little bit, and then leaving, and then it, uh, every now and then they'll pick some energy up from one of the haulers that's passing. Hmm. But he seems to be getting those roads built a lot faster than I have been able to in past tests, even with that. Yeah, I mean, that's true for everything. He does everything more efficiently, um, it seems. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check through, through history to, to look at that a bit, because I always find his road building to be really interesting. Oh, and there's no data, is there? You can see it in action in E18 and 5. E18 and 5. And then um, the the room right next to E19N5 
they actually have an active remote that they can pick up energy from. Mm -hmm. But in E18 and 5, the, neither of the sources are currently being harvested. So the builders are trying to harvest a little bit of energy here and there themselves. It's getting mad at me for having too many tabs open. Too many tabs. <laughs> Oh, okay. I don't okay. know if there's history on here. I think uh, that's probably still the same because it was causing dead ticks for rooms. Yeah, that's. I'm, I'm not even trying to look at history. Whoa, why are you so mad at me? Come on. I guess I'll have to use the client. Okay, I'll use the desktop client then. It's annoying that's to the use. The gear just hit uh, RCL4. Wow, that was fast. Yeah, just under 11,000 ticks. Eleven thousand. Wow. Okay. They they said they had improved it. Uh, they weren't wrong. I. Gosh, the storage is halfway built already. <laughs> wow. Wow, that is fast. Wow. <laughs> okay. We have the best low RCL economy in now. That's very impressive. Huh, I'll have to look through history to check that out. I hope history is working a little bit. And that is with building probes to remotes mm -hmm. at RCL3, presumably. In the client, maybe that will work. Yeah, Cyrus, you definitely, definitely have some catching up to do. Hmm. The Bot Arena and the Scoops Warfare Championship server are on the same uh, domain. That's interesting. That's the same IP address. Yeah, it's the Scoops Warfare Championship server, but. The bot arena DNS is also pointing at it. Right, yeah, that makes sense. So you've got Viking and Gear both at RCL four, and everyone else RCL three and two. Interesting. We've got Shu kind of right behind. Oh, I'm in my room. I'm trying to figure out what bug is is happening, but it's not wanting me to to find that out. Okay, and my bot decided to put the storage in a place that's not where it's planned. That's gonna be interesting. I was just about to ask about that. It destroyed that container, and then it and then it popped a storage in there. Hmm. Yeah, well, it can do that, but it failed at doing that. So I actually have another layout, but I guess it doesn't realize that. Road building from gray. I like how consistent Vikings reserving is of remotes. It seems like you're making sure they're kept yours and that they're always being u fully utilized. I really like that. Definitely helps that there's not a lot of fighting as there is with uh, Gear and Tega and the other players. Mm -hmm. The impressive, yeah, it's so impressive that Gear is Having such an advantage. Yeah, I agree. I was also excited to see, after he talked about it, how he was going to do and what he actually did to improve his economy. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I want to... I just want to see... I have no other no other tabs open, no other, no other data of... It's very strange. Gears Road Builders are also doing the thing where they're grabbing energy from the nearby remote and then just using that to build the roads out. Yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. Mind, mind you, the, two, the impressive thing is with creeps that they are, after years you encounter new bugs and edge cases. 
<laughs> yeah, everything goes wrong somehow. <laughs> right. Most of the content is edge cases. <laughs> yeah, the I was saying at the start, you know, whatever, it's really about what bug, bot is the last buggy, and to some extent that's true, because whoever has the last edge cases is gonna do better. Hmm. Looks like admin has a bug. Yeah, I'm not sure what my bug is, but my uh, remote defenders and remote harassers are not attacking creeps. They'll chase them, but they won't actually shoot at them. It's weird. Hmm. They're just trying to give them a hug. <laughs> like like Lord Greyweathers, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Peace and love. Oh, still waiting for data. Hmm. Might have might have just made a ton of requests way too much and and now it's getting mad at me. What can I do to, to fix that? Okay, we'll take a look at the stats, and then maybe the API will let me get happy again. So we've got Viking in gear, pretty much at the same GCL here. Gear's got the storage completed, and it's just working on the extensions for our RCL4, so wow. absolutely cruising on the economy. What about Viking? What's his state? Getting up the storage. Gotcha. And just cruising on the economy as well, but clearly not quite as fast as him. Yeah, it's crazy fast. Tiga here, definitely going to catch up. You can see his his curve here is clearly heading in the up direction, much faster than pretty much everyone else's. I'm sure the infrastructure will pay off, but I can see an argument to be made that it's worth to to heavily invest in the storage before heavily investing in the remote roads because it definitely slowed them down um, looks like Aspoff is upgrading the most although I'm a bit suspect of these stats they seem very low and, and kind of inaccurate because um, so I think yeah. didn't gear have remote roads before storage as well and I also do yes. mm -hmm. so I'm not actually sure what's going on with Tigger well it might be that it's just a Bit less efficient right now, but I think Tiga has further away remotes because he's kind of going very southward. So that, that is might also be. true. Spending a lot on haulers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I was I was winning in creeps. Oh. Uh, this should probably. Hmm. Okay, I see. Um, so yeah, to it, RCL4, still Shibdib at RCL1, and Mad Duck Mike at RCL2, but everyone else is at RCL3 or greater, so, impressive. Yeah, the meta's definitely getting better, people are definitely getting better here. You can see from this, oh, these stats are lovely, you can see from these stats here that Tiga has definitely built a lot more roads than anyone else. So, although Gear might have built them a lot faster, he definitely had less to build. And he's still got more to build. Over a hundred more. I'm, I'm not... I don't think this is a very accurate chart here. Hmm. Total bear it's very hits. satisfying. It's very satisfying to look at the uh, the GCL graph 
and watch watch, uh, watch people hit the the GCL numbers and then immediately flatline as their bot reprioritizes. Yeah, for sure. Right here. Right here. <laughs> Total barricade hits. We got a lot from Snow Goose. Investing a lot in those ramparts early on. Um, definitely a good idea to not build ramparts until safe mode is almost over because they serve no purpose. Um, got, yeah, I'm suspect of. <laughs> this is very suspect. I'm pretty sure there's more than three players upgrading right now. Um, Tega has somehow managed to reach a two hundred percent spawn uptime. So, good job to him for that. <laughs> uh, that's that can't be right. Mm. Yeah, some of these stats are definitely not trustworthy. But the GCL one is. I know that. It's a shame. Some of our Grafana stuff is just not functioning because of some perhaps some graphite bugs I'm not quite sure the cause so it's kind of hurt our ability to calculate some of the statistics like the GCL per tick which again is definitely not oh, which one was it this one which is definitely not accurate but hopefully we'll get that fixed nope not that one this one yeah that's that can't be it how how are you calculating GCL per tick? Are you using raw GCL data over time? Sort of. We're reading history, but we're reading it every I think every minute. Yeah, every minute here, and some of it's definitely not right. And obviously, you upgrade multiple times per minute, so it's not tracking it very accurately. There's a lot of issues with it. The way we were tracking it. I with see. We were doing divide series lists before, but we can't do that with, um, with the whatever bugs going on. <laughs> Just surpassing it. <laughs> Aspoff doesn't care. Hmm. If we look, yeah, the delta's working. I like that. So that is essentially a GCL per take if we if we did math with it, but we can't because it doesn't work. Um, definitely impressive how Viking has had such a good early game. So despite the the lack of heavy conflict, good job on that. Yeah, I'm having a lot of CPU troubles as well. So that's probably the biggest thing that can be improved. Yeah. And it seems to be quite a bit behind as well. Like at least a thousand ticks behind where I would want it with this state. But it's it's good enough. As long as it doesn't bug out and die, and then mm -hmm. you keep this up and you're pretty good. I'm trying to I, I figured it out. My ranged creeps were ignoring other ranged creeps. Mm, they would not attack. Not they would not attack uh, a creep that only had ranged attack parts. Just attackers, healers, everything else, but not ranged attackers. That's a nasty bug. Mm. Fix now. Mm. Dread Dread Freak, probably. Dread Freak, I'm curious about these roads uh, as they're building. Are they building in five unit segments? Hmm. Yeah, something weird is going on with my in-room workers that are building up the remote roads. That's why they're, like, bouncing all over the place. <laughs> it's just interesting because I was making construction sites along the path, but, like, spread out, so... Yeah, the way the remote roads get built is the remote haulers just, like, drop down construction sites and build them as they go across. So it's normal for oh. them to start as a dotted line for me and then get filled in. Because they don't place them on every spot. It's just, like, spread out so they can work as they go along. Gotcha. Hmm. I'm definitely not loving it. Because 
you'd probably only want to spawn those kinds of creeps when you're working to repair them, like after a few thousand ticks after they've been built. And initially, I really like the kind of more stratified only build creeps that would take from haulers or would take from the source itself to do this. Um, I mean, there's a lot of energy being kind of wasted here where some of them are partly built and you, you want to build them as fast as possible, right? So having a bunch of partly built ones is just, it's not a huge waste, but it's definitely a waste. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing some improvements that I can make. That's a potential improvement that I could do. Also, my in-room workers like bouncing around between all the remote roads yeah. that are getting built. Yeah, that's a bit. But it's good. I mean, I don't even have remote roads, so you're ahead of me on that. Good job. Yeah. I also noticed that when it makes the transition between RCL2 and RCL3, it has too many remotes and it doesn't drop them fast enough. So it's sort of like wasting energy by mining more than it can spend at the moment. Yeah. Let me fix my stats here. There we go. Oh, that seems a bit off. I'm very curious, Marvin. What's the uh, what's the big secret feature? <laughs> is that is that for next bot arena? Yeah, I wasn't able to get it implemented in time, but it's very powerful. Very very. It's powerful. not remote roads though. It's not remote roads because that would actually make sense and be a good idea, but. I can't do that. That would be crazy. Is it pipelines to remotes? <laughs> oh, pipeline bot. Yeah, I'm pipeline just... <laughs> bot. Maybe not. Maybe not. Might be something else. There we go. The original then. No one else does it. Yeah, no one else does it. Uh, well, some people do it on MMO, but no one in bot arena. Because I would know. I, everyone would know if that if that happened. Okay, it looks like my economy is recovering, finally. <sighs> There's some weird traffic stuff going on, and I, it's so hard to debug. I'll get to it eventually. They really should build the other container first, I think. Right? Like, shouldn't you have, when you hit RCL3, building that second uh, fast filler container means you have more capacity to fill those... Um, containers with energy for your builders and your upgraders and then you also make your extensions more efficient once they're built i don't know well, i built it because uh, i can get the two extra cranes that fill up the extensions quicker yeah which is one tick behind fast enough to spawn reservers back to back oh. and if i only had one container i wouldn't be able to be even close to that to get some idle time otherwise Interesting, that's very exact. I like that. Man, this default O guy is... He's kind of popping off now. Okay, we've got... Most people are reserving at this point. Most people are nearing RCL4, if not at it already. I want to check out Gears Economy to see what's so efficient here, what's so cool about it. Hmm. So stuff like this interests me. Like, wouldn't it be a good idea to have the storage over here and have the upgraders take directly from the storage? What do you guys think? Yeah, that's what I do. But do you always do that? What if it's what if the storage would be better like up here because there's remotes up here? And then would you would you trade off like that? Yeah, so I definitely I, think it's worth it. I usually don't put the storage where I would want the upgraders to post in it because there's going to be lots of other sections around the storage, um, and I want to be able to maximize how many 
upgraders can pull from the container or link or whatever they're they're pulling from. Uh, I want to fit as many of those as I can there. And if I'm using the storage and have the rest of my headquarters structures right there, that's going to limit how many upgraders can pull without having to move and shuffle around. Yeah, that makes sense. You don't want them to be moving too much. That costs intense and they probably won't upgrade as efficiently. And upgraders tend to have a lot less move parts mm -hmm. so they can have more work parts. Um, but that means you want them to be moving less, otherwise they'll be sitting there fatigued. Yeah, great point. Uh, some people do a strategy where they have, I think Cyrus does this, Tega, they, they have the upgraders maybe sit a bit further away from the storage, but there's other upgraders in between them that they'll take energy from. And I can sort of see it. Um, like, if you're a Yoner here, uh, there's a container here, but you might have an upgrader over here, and it might just take from this upgrader. And that just costs a lot more intense. Or you just put more carry parts on this guy, and that works too, but... I don't know. It's helpful for those, those moments where you are trying to maximize how much energy you're pumping into the controller. Being able to pack in a lot of upgraders and then have smaller speed energy in from the outside of the cluster. Mm -hmm. and have the upgraders pass it through to the center helps uh, you don't have to have the haulers push all of the upgraders out of the way um, but that's not necessarily an all the time case yeah we're seeing that exactly right here although I would say this is more of a problem with bad container placement because if you place the can container right here for example you'd have nine upgrade spots or, or eight upgrade spots and that would be more than enough for all the haulers to efficiently drop off the energy without shoving upgraders around. Yeah, exactly. It helps with the stability as well. Mm -hmm. And even if you get a tough room, you can kind of alleviate it by having your upgraders transfer to each other. Yeah. You don't have to rely so much on a good container spot. Although usually I find there's so there's usually so much space around the, the controller. I've never really had that issue where there's been no, I've had it a couple times, I guess. Hmm. <laughs> Why did it reserve this room first? What do you do? What it? Oh, okay. 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 We're good. Definitely over harvesting. I'm not sure why. Definitely can't get enough haulers for all of this, and it probably doesn't have the CPU to deal with all that either. Let's see, what do the creep counts look like at this point? So, in the lead, we still got gear. Azpoff, well, Azpoff is technically ahead, but Viking has much more infrastructure. And then Rob, who's just about going to hit RCL4. I'm surprised Captain Muscles is doing pretty well. Hmm. And then count here. Once again I am king. Once again I have way too many haulers. So I'm very happy with that. Hmm. Dipping a little bit into my CPU bucket, but it's alright. Yeah, Captain has been playing a long time, so I would expect his bot to be pretty good. Um, I don't know. It, it seems very average. The combat is certainly good, but I mean, all he's been really fighting with is, um, is Night Dragon up here. And maybe a bit with Lego Nick, so probably not a great showcase of how strong their combat code is, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I'd say uh, I, I fought with him a lot during Season 5, and I'd say his uh, his economy is more of the showcase. 
I think that's fair. Yeah, because you guys were fighting, and I don't... Hmm, I mean, I don't know if you put that much time into your into your combat code as much as you put into your economy and your and your base planning. Because, I don't know, you guys... Your, the fighting wasn't all that advanced for either of you, I'd say. Which is, you know, you both didn't have huge economies, and you were both sort of behind. So I wouldn't expect a ton of stuff. But neither of you were really attacking each other's rooms, besides with some some duos, I think. Yep. Yeah, my uh and I was working on basically my, my ancient bot <laughs> that uh that that needs some love, so it doesn't have any quads, it just had yeah, I basically had slapped together some some duos that were actually like tier three boosted and could and could do a little bit of damage, but yeah, it was very much, you know a little a little bit of a newbie fight in terms of in terms of the combat code. Yeah, okay. okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to diminish, I just no, no, not at all. Like this is that's literally the first time I had done anything other than like take out like an RCL three neighbor in season one or something like that. So, oh, red line? Is that a red line? That's I not saw? a red line. No, no. It was a um, uh, it was a picket line. It was a picket line. Looks like a conga line, actually. Nothing to see here. Don't disrespect the picket line, though. Come on. Yeah, picket lines are good. Hmm, they build containers way too slowly. They should focus. This is what I was criticizing other people for. They gotta focus on one container at a time. You thing. should make it so that when all your creeps are in a line, they, like, put up a sign emoji and uh, say... So they do an actual picket line. Oh, okay. I can see that. Sand people always ride single fire to hide their numbers. Just FYI. <laughs> Bro, guys, what are you doing? What? Don't leave your position. Where are you going? Uh, oh, maybe they're fleeing? Maybe... What? It probably wasn't even that bad of a... You guys can defend. Yeah, maybe I made abandonment a bit too much. Because if they're just fleeing from just a normal random creep walking through. What is this over here? I don't know. Abandonment's hard. Because you have to do so much trade off between spawn time, because you could choose another remote um, instead of defending this one because of infrastructure that you've invested in, because of how much you can spend on defending it, even if it has a high income. A lot of stuff to consider. So a lot of Want dilemmas. To try again. A lot of dilemmas, yeah. It's a dilemma. Not necessarily any right answer every time. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, that's not good. They shouldn't be pushing like that. I mean, my first strategy when it came to abandonment was, well, if the enemy is spawning creeps and spending energy on fighting me, then I might as well spend energy and spawn more creeps. Mm. So why would you ever abandon a remote? But uh, obviously that doesn't work in a free fall. Yeah. That, that works if you're harassing the enemy, but not if you're trying to actually harvest the remote. Yeah. You don't want to keep spending money on harvesting creeps. Well, it can go back and forth. Depends how fluid you are with it. I think these guys are... What are they trying to do? I'm not sure why they... Why are they reserving this so heavily? Yikes. That's a waste. Hmm. Oh, Zaris has got to go. All right. Good evening bye. or good night. Good night. But I need to go to bed before it's morning. So, gotcha. See you next time. See you. Have a good night. Four and a half remotes. Okay. Meanwhile, Viking, you've only got four, but I've. Hmm. Well, two of them aren't even. What's going on here? 
Uh, maybe CPU troubles. Oh. I don't really have any specific indicators. You've only got 30 creeps. I do know I'm at like zero bucket this whole time. What? <laughs> so technically it should be skipping ticks on my creeps. What's Although your I don't see that happening at least. What's happening with your CPU? What's uh, it's being spent in the wrong places. Hmm. In what places though, do you know? Like what would you use? Probably somebody? room planning. Room planning. But you've already got a you've already got a, you already have a base. What's what would mm, it be? No. The rest is still being planned out. Oh. Oh. Whoa, okay. That is going awfully slow. Yeah, that might be a time where I'd say, maybe do optimize your room planning, because I feel like it should only take a few thousand CPU, and that would only be the first maybe 100 or 200 or 300 ticks of the round. But Yeah, I agree. Okay. Mine isn't built for being competitively viable. I just had some fun ideas and went ahead and did them as a side project at a time. Gotcha. That's fine. And uh, takes a bit more CPU than I'd like later what is on. What is it that's taking all that CPU? Is it like a min cut or something? No, it's a genetic algorithm. Nice. I feel like we need a video on that. Ooh, you're very quiet. I said I feel like we need a video on that genetic algorithm. <laughs> See if I can find the time. That'd be nice. Although I definitely wouldn't recommend the CPU it takes. Unless you're having fun with it. You can do way better with just a simple plan. Okay. I don't know Marvin, I think we might have a bread line here. That's not a bread line. They're, they're it's confused. a bread triangle. <laughs> It's a red triangle, okay. I have no idea how this happens. <laughs> what what goes wrong for this to... Didn't you say it was definitely fixed? They seem to be swapping further away and then handing the energy back closer? Is that what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> guys, 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 guys. Two features competing in perfect, like perfect room geometry with the controller right there in the way. Oh, it's a whole roadblock. Okay, time to add this to the to the list. We've got only a hundred and what's the, how many issues have we got here? I think it's default spot and not Marvin's. Oh yeah, it's default spot. Come on, default. Fix this. Uh, Those two creeps are on strike. And they're holding up the whole workplace. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to be a strike breaker. Uh-oh. What happens when you have work unions? Okay, there we go. I do know one fix. I do know a fix. Boom. Simple as. I hope that doesn't manifest too much. It probably won't because once I have more rooms and more more creeps, um, or I guess less creeps per room, then it will probably not be allowed to have so many creeps, and the existence of so many creeps is probably what's causing the problem. Guys, you're still reserving that? What are you doing? Very ambitious. Hmm. Starting to build some containers. I am very much behind. I hope to I hope I'll catch up though. We'll see. Hmm. Soros, is your bot kind of recover oh no he's gone. <laughs> I forgot. Um okay. So Joe, you've got your awesome, crazy brood war terrain analyzer. Essentially, do you want to <laughs> talk about what that's for and and why you made it? 
Well, the the idea being basically, kind of, simply put, like I think Pathfinder can be done better, and so basically we've got we've got Pathfinder with with tile level resolution, and we've got you know find route with with room level room level resolution. Um, and I figured kind of basically like the the way that creeps path and like rooms are pretty big, but they're not huge. And so I feel like if we were to break the the rooms down into more of bite sized chunks of like, okay, here's regions within the room and choked points that separate them. And so then if you're basically to do all of your stuff that you would do with Pathfinder or with even, you know, range based finds potentially of like, okay, is this in range? Well, maybe I should navigate a, a rough graph of regions as opposed to just checking range because it might be on this other side of a solid wall or a novice wall and so the the whole idea behind my you know my big v2 of my of my web assembly bot <laughs> as it's going to turn out to be is is essentially that that the the kind of euclidean or uh, chebyshev distance that we use for everything is probably not quite as good as if you just make a big graph of of all of the regions of the game that you can see um, and I think it can probably fit in heap, like with the, the amount of heap memory that we have. I think it's probably workable as a replacement. And so, you know, there's a lot of kind of stuff to, still to figure out. But the idea is that, you know, make a make a big graph and do a lot of stuff with it is is the long term plan. <laughs> yeah. And just to show an example of this on a per room level. So I think I'm showing that. Yeah. Here we've got it on just a random room. And you can see all these choke points that are sort of cut off, all these regions created. Um, it's going to be interesting to see, to see you using this in action. And you said you wanted to use it for combat and stuff as well, and I can see that. I think that would be interesting, because you know, figuring out where enemies are going to go, cutting them off, uh, as I think you said, and um, and using these large open areas as perhaps ways to you know you want to capture this large area and once you have this large area you can cut off these choke points and put them into a trap stuff like that like you can do a lot with all this information i'm sure right let me just chase you into my boosted creep over here yeah exactly, exactly. It'd be interesting to see finally we've got two containers up oh, i'm so far behind Tig uh, has finally switched to focusing fully on upgrading that controller, so RCL4 is coming up very shortly for his bot. Gotcha. Let's let's see that. So we've got. So uh, does I'm that dropping. choke point? Uh, I was gonna ask. Does that choke point graph work well on rooms that are wide open as well, or does it only work on rooms that are relatively closed off at the moment? Yeah, it'll make large regions for if, if a room is wide open, it'll make a, a huge region kind of, you know, if there's a few little islands in the middle of walls, it'll kind of use the walls as a, as a divider, but still some tuning to do to make it, you know, make kind of sane decisions, but uh, it's, you know, pr pretty, uh, it doesn't take a very advanced algorithm to make some relatively sane regions. It's mostly just a distance transform. Pretty cool. Uh, based on the StarCraft um, train uh, algorithm. Yeah, and so there's a few of those. There's uh, BWTA and BWT BWTA2, which are both based on kind of, they build a graph uh, very, in, initially they build a graph all, to all of the edges of regions, and then they prune that graph. I looked at that initially, and it's very CPU intensive because it's a lot of, um, it's not based on tiles. It's based on a lot of a lot of lines and a lot of floating point math, uh, and we have very sim very limited CPU time in scrapes. And so I went with more of a CPU kind of a, a, a more budget conscious CPU approach with uh, what what's Brood War Easy Map is the thing. And so it doesn't it actually doesn't make a graph like I'm going for in in the way that they implemented it, but it makes all the regions. And so I'm kind of stepping from their approach to making regions to making a graph based on that and so we'll, s we'll see how it goes that's gonna be really exciting hmm i don't know i can see it being like I, maybe i just don't understand how it would help with pathfinding and if if it does help a lot that'd be really interesting to see but because you have such unique regions 
where they encapsulate like really weird sets of tiles that's not it's not a uniform like rectangle or anything like that's a really I'm interested how that can help with pathfinding. Do you think you could explain that maybe a bit? Yeah, well, I think the uh, the interesting thing you can do is to kind of make it smaller problems. So right now, if you have to pathfind to to a region very far away, if you've got a scout that's trying to go, you know, ten rooms away or whatever like that, you, you know, your options are to either do a find route and restrict the rooms that you're that you can go through, which can potentially, you know, it can be good, but it can also you know, it's hard to know whether passing through the room, you know, from this exit to that exit, the, the, the amount of data we can feed to, to find route, it's hard to know necessarily what the cost of that will be and hard to get, make good estimates and stuff like that. And so mm -hmm. I think just having the, having the ability to have a, a, to have it be more of a, a broad, you know, you do your initial routing over a, over a, a smaller set of nodes but a, a larger set you know kind of s m making it so that you're not f not looking at quite such a, a small problem because like, right now you're you can you know throw a hundred thousand ops at pathfinder to be able to to make it 10 rooms away because it might get caught in kind of a, cu a couple of heuristic kind of dead ends in terms of you know rooms that it thinks it can go through because it's closer heuristically but it's just going to waste a lot of ops just kind of turning away on those so if you're looking at it region-wise, you can eliminate those regions pretty quickly because it's going to you know, traverse into them. Just spend a few ops saying, OK, it's closer heuristic-wise, but also it's not going to get me there. And so it can just mark those as dead nodes and move on with its life as opposed to spending you know, potentially thousands of ops there. So, so that's the idea is kind of like break it into regions and path over those. And then break it, once you've got the regions you're going through, you've got kind of waypoints along your path. And you can just do a, a smart heuristic over those and path over just a couple of regions at a time gotcha Whew. that sounds like a hell of a problem to overcome or i guess to to implement but it's fun yeah but i've only ever done um pathfinding with uniform regions i i kind of wrote an a star implementation once and i can see it working for uniform regions fully but to work with ununiform very different regions that's that's an interesting problem swamps are hell i can confirm oh swamps but yeah. there's a lot of interesting stuff that you can do that you know i'm i'm looking at adding like a you know a, a line of sight pather if like if you happen to be in a uniform region you might as well just do a line of sight path as opposed to doing an a star path so some fun stuff potentially I mean, pathfinding is the biggest expense of, I think, most bots. So if you can reduce that significantly, you'll go from 10 CPU bot down to 5 CPU bot. It'll be That's crazy. That's right. It can generate even more pixels. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's taking so long to build. Uh, I think doing that in a bot that isn't written in, for WebAssembly would probably not be viable because the native Pathfinder is WebAssembly. But if you are doing WebAssembly, then you could probably do it pretty well. Yeah, I can see that because there would be so much different data points to go through to to make that node thing work that I can see it being a really... Yeah... You can see that being a lot of expenses to add up if you're just doing JavaScript. <laughs> or especially if you're doing Python. If you're doing Python, there's there's no shot. This would not work at all. Python just compiles to JavaScript, though. It's basically the same performance as if I wrote it in JavaScript. Oh. Well, I know, com I know it compiled, but I didn't think it would compile very well. Interesting. Okay. It, it translates pretty well. There's... A lot of similarities between Python and JavaScript, besides the syntax. And then the, the engine probably optimizes some stuff away too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that for sure. Hmm. Tigas still got a lot of catching up to do. 
Meanwhile, Gear is just very far ahead of everyone. I'm, I'm a little blown away by Gear's bot right here. It's almost halfway to RCL5. I'm going to have to take a look. This is very impressive. Although there's not much, much, yeah, there's not much conflict with Saros right now, but still. I don't know if I've seen Gears creeps using the, making sure the empty haulers take the fastest possible path, abusing swamp walking and stuff. I'm not sure if I've seen his creeps doing that before, but that's one thing I'm noticing. Hmm. That seems so minor though. <laughs> right? But yeah, but large haulers, um... Keeping a tight pack with the upgraders around the, the upgrader container, but nothing too fancy that I'm seeing so far. I wish we had an accurate estimation of their GCL per tick. I mean, we can do some math to figure that out from the data. But I put time period. I mean, yeah, I guess you could also just look at the number of callers present. Hmm. Mm. Sorta. Of. Looks like nine by six. Nine by six. Huh. So is that max size for what's that? Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing the the upgraders are max size. But yeah, basically fifty four energy per tick going into the controller. Uh, actually, I just saw an upgrader die, so technically down to forty five for now. Maybe averaging at around fifty is my guess. And nothing groundbreaking, but I am noticing that the creeps, the fast fillers closest to the spawn have no move parts, and they are renewing, and then the ones that are further away from the spawn are have move parts and are not renewing. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I do like it. But these haulers here, they're wasting a lot of time not efficiently hauling energy to this container. I think a, I think a big part of Gear's good start here is just this is a really nice room for for kind of making a good start out of it. Yeah, no kidding. Although good room, uh, no conflict. Everyone else has had a ton of conflict this room. They've kind of made it so there's no conflict by hurting Cyrus so much because Cyrus is really far behind. Usually Cyrus is on par or sometimes even above Gear in terms of income, in terms of eco. But not doing great. Where's Gear? Where's Cyrus? Yeah, Cyrus is very far behind. At least Tick is catching up. He's more where I'd expect him to be, although usually he's where Gear is. Right, well, at least on the GCL graph, it looks like Tigger caught up, but mostly because. Everybody's everybody's paused at that RCL four threshold to build all their stuff. So we'll mm -hmm. see who who starts to pull away from that. I mean, gear uh, has from that from that threshold first. Yeah, besides besides gear, right. so far gear is the only one who's uh, at making progress towards RCL five. Azpoff should be the first one to pull away because he's been building. I hope for a while. I haven't really looked. Yeah. Otherwise, it looks like they're six six total players that are at RCL 4 and in process of making those buildings. Viking has been at RCL 4 for quite a while now, hmm. and is not yet progressing uh, towards RCL 4. almost completely broken. Yeah, it looks like it. It's got... trying to recover, but it's very buggy. This is also a very experimental version I sent in. Oh. Just, you know, to test the uh, eco and stuff. Did, did you lose all of your creeps? I'm, I'm now, I'm looking at it you felt like yeah i've lost right them now. several times <laughs> oh no trying to come back into it but yeah i don't know it's a shame but it's about what i expected though why a lot does... of changes planned coming up how does it happen like this how does it end up with no energy in the in the stuff well it's a very experimental version i just mm -hmm. i fixed the eco from the season i had a, a lot of eco bugs and uh, i changed a lot of stuff around and uh, added some new planning and stuff damn uh, it was doing great until until it hit four yeah yeah in theory it's great i think i just need to patch up stuff and uh, get my old systems working up to par and i think I, this spot can do very well 
maybe scrap the old genetic algorithm based planning. Mm. It's not quite paying off. I can see it. Mm, yeah, I don't think you need it. I mean, I think a scoring system is good and choosing the best of a set of results, but going full genetic other algorithm seems a bit much. Because, like, spending an extra 10,000 ticks planning out your base to be a little bit better, I don't see that paying off. Like, what, your storage is going to be a little bit better, but maybe you miscalculated, or maybe your remotes change. Let's say your remotes change because of conflict or someone claims near you and now you're harvesting completely differently and your calculations based on what your remotes how efficient your remotes were are now inaccurate yeah i agree it was uh it was a bit of a sin doing a side project like that yeah. it's fun it's fun and you learn right you get better at coding genetic algorithms and such yeah and it also works quite well for a season and a memo actually because that stuff just speeds through it. You got plenty of CPU to manage. Yeah. But for these smaller tournaments, definitely not quite the way you want to go. Trepidim is here with a ton of hits. Well, not a ton, but for this period in time, a ton of hits on the ramparts and a bunch of ramparts when there's really no need for that. I mean, he's almost at RZL4, he could push that instead, but he seemed to invest a fair bit in this. I like his rampart layout, but it's a bit early for him. Oh yeah, I talked to him about his ramparts. Oh, it's so smart. Um, I don't think it's perfect, but like, look at this. You'll never be able to fit in a creep here that won't be able to be attacked by at least two defenders. And he purposely... Yeah, there's no exposed corners. None. Um, yeah. It does get pretty bad when there are no corners to avoid exposure from. Like, this being here is very lucky. Otherwise, he would have ramparted all the way to here, and then up here, and it, w it wouldn't have... It gets weird. It gets weird. So that part... Yeah, I've seen rooms where it just walls the exits, basically. <laughs> yeah, and mm, I don't know if that's the best. I've got Yona looks here like, bouncing. Looks like Tigabut's doing its ramparts and uh, it got its tower up and it's doing its storage now. Wow. Kinda slow. And I'll be starting off for the night as well. I'll see you guys. Uh, see ya. Thanks for the commentary. Have a good night, Viking. <laughs> yeah. Mine is gonna have a concave rampart layout as well. Once it Gets to RCL4. Yeah, as always. You do it kind of differently, though, right? You, I don't know, you, you never really end up with those those lines like Trepidimus sometimes has. I'm just going to call him Trep. Trepidimus, I think, was the pronunciation guy we got in the YouTube chat. Yeah, but... But, <laughs> but Trep was also acceptable, so... Mm -hmm. I'll go for that. Yeah, I... Not sure exactly how his algorithm works. I just know how mine works. Gotcha. And if the concave layout that it would make is too bad, then it will just do a fallback instead. Because I don't want it to wall the exits. What's the fallback? Uh, at the moment, it just like picks the center of the base and does a flood fill out from there. Oh. And that's basically... So it just ends up with a square base, basically. I think you could benefit a lot from combining that more with min cut and having your fallback be a min cut instead of just flood filling. Potentially, but I do the ramparts before the rest of the base, so it'd be hard to do a min cut because mm -hmm. I have to decide what the inside of the min cut is. Yeah, that's hard. Hmm. Like, like, obviously the best solution would be to run MinCut like a hundred times, and based on the results of planning more things, if it increases MinCut by too much, then uh, you reconsider the plan to an extent. But obviously that also takes an insane amount of CPU. I think the ideal thing for me to do would be to get a choke point map like the one that Joe made and uh, 
like take a, a number of regions that have choke points and be like, this is the inside of my base, and then it just ramparts across the choke points. Yeah, I agree. <sighs> guys, 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 guys. I need remote roads. I really should add remote roads. Because that hurts. That's so much wasted. And now they're gonna bread line, bread bag behind this guy for a while. Mm. They could be pulling him. <laughs> they could be, yeah, that's a good point. Although pulling with traffic code is really hard to do. It's so hard to do. That's why I turned off all my pull code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tiga is like, oh yeah, it's hard, but oh, I do it. I just, I just, I just do it, you know? <laughs> well, I, I don't have any, my, my traffic management is all swapping. I don't have any pushing. I felt like pushing was the thing that I needed to get my pull trains to like when a pull train is stuck in between two extension arrays and you've really got the you've got to get them to tell someone else, no, you gotta back up. I can't let you swap through me. Yeah. And that was the thing that I never got the code to go right for. I have pushing code, but I don't think it would work even then I don't think it would work all that well with pulling. There's so many caveats uh, and so many checks you have to do and so many um, edge cases. As long as you can fall back to at least half aim if you get stuck. It makes things Just easier. Just have the front of the pole train uh, tell any groups in front of it to suicide. <laughs> then they're not in the way. <laughs> yeah, that, that's another solution. <laughs> oh, here's Tigger with the tower repairing. Eh. I know, I don't love it. And then Hmm. Gear is about two thirds of the way to RCL five. I'm gonna be curious to see if this hits before safe mode drops. Let's see how much, how many ticks do we have left? Yeah, about gear 3, is uh, nearly, nearly double the second place. I'm, I'm, although I don't know if the battle last for long. It looks like they're about three player that are about to start pumping their GCL after that RCL four halt. Completely wild. And they're not even doing it the most efficiently. They've got a main harvesting room, a main remote here, not even reserved. They've got whatever this is going on here. And of course, they've got the larger haulers, which are just objectively less efficient in terms of relaying. So it's really weird to see them do so well. We love our chunk yeah, haulers I here. Think I think it's quite a good room that they have. Mm hmm. Looks like the ramparts are starting to go down. And again, Gears, Gears base building code, I th think Tiga complimented this during seasonal, is the Gears base building code is really, really good at finding those caves, finding those kind of spots where it's, you know, regions apart from the rest of the map where you can kind of just rampart as little as possible, turtle up hard, and have your have your towers have a really good kind of low range firing solution on anyone attacking you. For sure. Yeah, I've, I've kind of tried to mimic a lot of Gears base planning, and I think I've done a very good job, but... It, it's definitely great at choke points. Part of it is the min-cut algorithm they use. So I kind of copied it in a lot of ways, trying to find the same distance they use. And they have a very high distance weight where as distance increases, they want um, a lot less ramparts. So if the distance is really close and it's a lot more ramparts, they'll be more accepting of that. So they'll probably rampart like here. And sure, it's a lot of ramparts compared to if you had the base elsewhere. But it's also very, very, very defensible. Because this tower is going to be extremely effective. All right, well, gear is officially, uh, officially has over double the GCL of the second place player. You can definitely tell already with the with the shape of those roads and the interior towards the controller that those are already built for extension arrays to be tucked nicely in there, and I'm sure they probably snakes all the way back into that hole back by the atrium. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, hmm. yeah, I would ramp out here, and then you'll need space for labs and extensions. I'm not sure. Maybe it expands a bit further out there. Maybe they cut around here. Because I know, I know Gears Code doesn't really like that much to go into corners, even though it's sort of in a corner here. Like, it likes to expand a bit out. Yeah, that seems like that'd be enough room for 60 extensions and all the, 
all the necessary bits. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. They don't have dynamic labs though, right? So maybe the labs would go here? Yeah, I want to say it's just the usual slash zero configuration, but uh, yeah, right. don't quote me on that. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Oh, this is what I was... So I was insulting Tega before for not doing this, and Gear does it really well. So building up one rampart at a time. So Gear, or sorry, Tega had like a bunch of ramparts on 1,000 hits, so he kept using his tower to repair them. But what Gear's doing here is the same guy who goes over and builds the rampart is also repairing it a bunch and getting it to very high hits so that you don't have to spend your tower repairing it. Yeah, that's something uh, I forgot exactly who was mentioning it earlier, or a couple of days ago in, in one of the chats in Discord, but talking about their behavior stacks and how it's likely you can just add a behavior to a stack and, and have it be you know pretty dynamic in terms of what it does. And so they were talking about it in terms of go and find a resource. I don't care how you find it, but just give me a resource so I can do this repair job. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that case, it's really like, it's really you know, potentially useful to be able to just say like, I don't really, you know, don't need to care where this comes from. I just need to get this job done. And Yeah, I think I want to do stack-based jobs like that in the next version of my job assignment. That sounds really good. I'm mixed on At it. At the moment, I have my ramparts get built up after they're constructed as well, but the way I do it is not very efficient in terms of CPU. My job assignment code is oh. very expensive right now. Hmm. Yeah, um, just in terms of the behavior stack stuff, so for, for building, it, an easy thing to do is just say, you know, this builder, once it once it finishes building a rampart with, you know, it's got one hit at to, to start with, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to die in 100 ticks if you don't repair it. So an easy thing to do instead of letting that repairer just go back to idle and go repair something else, uh, or builder, have them repair the thing that they just built. So wait until the next tick, and then look for a rampart there the next tick, and repair it. And so, you know simple kind of stack based thing to say okay add to a stack check for rampart here next tick and help it yeah okay. i feel like in a sense that's over engineering i like people talk a lot about a good job assignment code and i mean just a statement just a simple if state machine is all you really need from my experience it's hard to say because I'm not really a professional developer I think that the ability to assign a stack of jobs or a queue depending on how you think about it would be a good way to have like smart job assignment code without it having to cost as much because you do the complicated calculations once and then you have multiple jobs queued up. Yeah, that's especially, that's what, especially if you have multiple creeps performing those jobs. And that's um, what that's what I'll do is I'll just create a queue of all of the construction that the, the room needs to do with priority based on, you know, is the room under attack? If so, prioritize ramparts. Um, do we need to uh, focus on spawns and extensions and things to make things more efficient or otherwise just prioritize whatever's closest to the repair creeps um but once you've got the, the queue you've got it prioritized you only have to do that calculation once for the room and then it's fairly cheap to look up what's the next thing that we need to build or else what's the closest thing mm -hmm. notice here tig's spawn is not fully active i think i mentioned this last season but his spawn wasn't really being used as much as it should have been, even though he had the CPU and the energy. And we're seeing that again. So maybe a bug from the season carried over. This might be... So So CPU is a little less uh, free because they were only, I think, what, 20 CPU right now or 30 right now? 35. Um, and, so, and so I think Tigabot's like, it doesn't look like it's doing the Bucket Brigade relaying anymore. So it's probably gone into a mode where it's no longer f spending CPU quite as freely. It just brigaded. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I 
Tigga's bot is extremely CPU efficient. I've talked to him before and I've been like, oh, Tigga, why do you have uh, so few creeps? And he was just like, oh, I put a limit on it. I can spawn more creeps. I could probably have, I think at this stage, he said he can have like uh, maybe over 150 creeps at once because he's just so efficient and most of his cost is just intense. Um, so I'm not sure. I think it's just a bug. No, I'm gonna have to tell Tigga about that. <laughs> Maybe Tigga's code is actually way more advanced than the code that he's showing us. And he's just scaling his power towards <laughs> to be like just good enough to win. He's like, oh, I've won the wa the last like 30 bot arenas. So I guess I should let someone else win this time. Let me put a th maybe like a five-year-old version of my bot in. That'd be funny. What I'm impressed by with, with gear is just like how, how linear that graph is of just like, basically the thing didn't even slow down as it hit RCL4 and cruised into RCL5, working on RCL5. It, it is just been basically solid, straightforward progress the whole time and like not really any hiccups. And I think even, even I think Tigabot will have, a, has a little bit of a slowdown and pause as it fills the storage after it, you know, after it builds the storage, it's like, okay, I've got to get the storage to this level. Gears bot seems to be just kind of like just driving forward straight and and no slowdowns. It is impressive. It's really consistent. It's definitely impressive. It definitely also does stop for a fair bit to do stuff though. It's just yeah, much less than anyone else. Rob here at maybe three times as long at RCL RCL four and still a while that are maybe twice as long at RCL4 so yeah it's not Captain Muscle's same kind of story so he's be much better at transitioning and much better at just getting more energy in wow I have to screenshot that it's beautiful <laughs> Um, in regards to creeps, not that many creeps from anyone really. Tega usually at this point, I see him normally at hovering around 100, 120. And he can do that. He has the CPU to do that. He has the code to maintain that. It's kind of weird that he's dropping so low, so down. Yeah, I should not have the most creeps. That's That's a bad sign. Viking and Tega and Gear normally have more than me. I think the only reason I don't have more is that my remotes keep getting contested. So I'm running out of things that I can do. Yeah. Unlucky spawn. Well, okay, you kind of chose to spawn next to Tega. No, I spawned before Tega did. Oh. I mean, I chose not to respawn. Right. But. But yeah, I've got I've got Tiga, I've got Rob and Mirror and Modus all sending harassers around. Gotcha. I've got gear. I'm watching this oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm watching this room of gears and it feels like he's gonna make RCL five before the safe mode drops, just based on vibes alone. Wow. <laughs> Although he is building his ramparts now, so maybe that'll set him back a smidge. Only a smidge. But yeah, he's 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 tucking into a very tight, like a the, the the tighter version of what you drew out for for the rampart. That's the one he's drawing into. So we'll see how this base packs. Hmm. And he's not even remoting that efficiently. Like these two rooms are great. Don't get me. Well, wrong. I think we had. What was what was the uh, the count of remotes we had decided was basically as as much as you could easily do with one spawn? It's like seven or eight. Uh, sources. It's, it's basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sources. Thank you. But it seems like it's basically picked you know a, a really good cluster of close remotes and it's focusing on those and not spending extra energy on going for remotes further away. And uh, mm, that's not true. We've got eleven sources here, um, give or take. That's not sustainable and clearly it isn't 
right? This isn't reserved. This yep. isn't reserved. This isn't reserved. This. None of them are reserved. It's so weird. So you're saying there's even improvement to be had on this? Oh my God! So much improvement. Yeah. The meta game has legs. <laughs> Oh, I hope not. <laughs> well, assuming Gear is able to keep all of these upgraders fed, he should make RCL5 pretty easily before the safe mode is up. Wow. Yeah, they're they're just cranking through. Yeah, even with putting the ramparts up, like that's yeah, it's barely slowing him down. Where the hell is he getting all this energy from? A lot of these sources are close. That's the nice thing, is the two source room to the left, close. Two source room top left, close. Two source room top, close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cheap to maintain. Got this one over here. Yeah. And he's, he's making sure no energy is getting wasted. That's for sure. Like sometimes I'll see with slow motion ghost where the harvesters will just stop harvesting because they don't want to overfill the container, but I'm not seeing this at all. Hmm. I really like that. Room. Um, I'm noticing that that gear has some rooms where he's not reserving uh, the room and the miner is has fewer than five points. So it's making me wonder if it's actually intentional. Uh, I wonder what the math is on that. Is it possible that there are, that there's a way that an unreserved room uh, can be more cost effective than a reserved one? Yeah, the, the thing I can see from that is if you have enough remotes that are close, then it's efficient. Um, because right, there's enough energy close by that you don't need to reserve to get the extra energy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think that's the case though. Because this this should not be harvested. That's so far away compared to. Well, so what's the the question is spawn capacity though? Is the extra spawn is the extra spawn spend on mm -hmm. claimers for reserve not worth it right now? Right, I'm surprised that should be practically nothing. Mm, well, claimers are six hundred. Well. Yeah, energy, not spawn. Yes, spawn. Oh, they, do, they do have a shorter. They do have a shorter lifetime, so um, they are more expensive than spawn time, I guess, than I would normally think. But still, even, not very expensive. Even so, the the return on energy per ticks of spawn time should be higher for reservers than anything else that you're doing harvesting. Mm, sort of. Sort of. It if, could be that he had enough overhead spawn capacity to add an unreserved remote but not to add a reserved remote because you'd need more haulers for a reserved remote right although he has a couple of unreserved remotes mm -hmm. so yeah it, it doesn't two. so it doesn't seem to be marginal yeah in that case one reserved remote should be better in theory mm, i'm not loving these Hollers here going over the swamps. Come on, guys. Gear is 60k away from RCL5 at this point. I wonder if having the unreserved remotes just makes it easier to get all of the energy collected and brought back before the container overflows. Hmm. I mean, it's a slower fill on the container, but it's right. usually not too hard to fill those or take those before they overflow, unless yeah. you don't have enough hauler. If you have code to to do some estimation, then it's pretty easy. <sighs> it's happening again. <laughs> no. Bread triangle. <laughs> so are we having a bread triangle drinking game? Hey, that's not legal for me, but it's oh, the, the bread market line. Yeah, yeah, let's have a bread triangle drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Guys, guys, come on.
And they decide to go right over where the controller is, too. You're just getting in the way. And I don't have enough time to fix right. this bug. I'm going to head off for now. I may rejoin if you guys are still going later. Yeah, I'm going to have to stop soon. Uh, see ya. Bye. You got a thousand ticks? A thousand ticks to fix the bug. Yeah. A thousand yeah. ticks for a fix. A thousand ticks for a fix. <laughs> I think that's a bug that's been in Kamibot for a while, though. Mm -hmm. So it's probably not that easy to find a fix. Yeah, it's okay. not that easy. I am, like, absolutely enthralled by the corner that Gearbot has shoved itself into, because I, I'm struggling to think how 60 extensions are going to fit in here, but by God, I'm sure this thing has it planned. It might not be that many extensions. It might have mm. dropped some to make That's it more true. compact base. Overmind only runs, what, like 53 or something like that? Yeah, I've heard of people doing bunkers much smaller than that. Like, smaller than 60 extensions. I don't think Gear does that, though. I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. I'm not loving this. I've seen better. Yeah, your room has a lot of swamps, Marvin. <laughs> yeah, I Probably doesn't it, help. I thought it might be able to like, compensate him. And not plan all over them, but mm, whatever. Once you have roads, it's not bad. But before roads, it's very painful. Oh, I was in the middle of refactoring my factory code, so I'm not gonna have factors. Sag. You don't do commodities, anyways, right? Yeah. I've got that disabled too. It's hard to defend them and not, you know, not walk through remotes of enemies and then continuously die and then just waste energy forever. Yeah, my navigation code is good enough, I think, to avoid doing that. I have commodities enabled. Hmm. But it's is it just navigation because if the only way to get to, uh, let's say, a certain commodity is by going through a room that often has an enemy creep in it. Let's say it's not even a remote, but it just has a bunch of enemy creeps going through it, killing your creeps every time they try to get through. How do you really... I mean, there's certainly a way, but how do you manage that? How do you track and record that and respond to that? I have a map like a a copy of the map basically that I store in memory where it just stores a navigation score for each room mm -hmm. and so if I get attacked in a room then that gives it a score that says hey this isn't very good to go through nice okay and hopefully that will I'm not sure exactly if my commodity mining like acquisition code takes that into account as well as it should have. But I think it tr at least tries to. And definitely the navigation will try to walk around rooms that are dangerous. What do you do to track if you got attacked? Uh, log? I think I use the event log. Ooh, that's to check. expensive. Yeah, it's like if there are enemy creeps in the room, then it checks the event log to see if I got attacked. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I only I only check if there are enemy creeps that are attackers. I see. That's better. Yeah. I and think then I only have to check that once per creep name and cache the result. The way I was planning on responding to that was, um, if a creep dies and there's a tombstone, then it goes through the tombstone and, um you know, sees, sees what happens based on that. So if it died before Ticks to Live was over, before it died from old age, then it will mark the room as dangerous. I don't know. Ooh. Oh, no. So that is a way to do it as well, but it responds a bit slower. 
Yeah, for sure. Hmm. I don't know. I'm always so nervous about doing something that will increase CPU costs. I'm way too nervous about it, I think. Not living that rampart. It's so far away. Well, I'm going to drop. Good luck, everyone. All right, see ya. Yeah, I should, I should probably... Probably going to close off stream very soon. It's been a long... Wow. We'll see. Um, so it looks like most people are SEL4 now, which is very exciting. Yeah, we're getting close to the end of safe mode. Yeah. This... This bug. Oh, it's going to be to my downfall. I could quickly disable relaying. That would fix it. I don't know if I want to do that. We'll see. Have you tested it much with relaying off? Oh, I know. I know. It's it's something with relaying because it relays. Well, and then it... yeah, I know that the bug is in relaying, but I'm wondering if it would perform okay with relaying off. Oh, the... I see. I'm not... I don't think it would have too bad of an impact, maybe 5-10%. Yeah, because as much as I play it up, relaying is kind of a micro-optimization. But so is so much of what you do. So. Yeah, micro-optimizations add up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gear's showing that clearly, even though they they don't... They don't have all the micro optimizations that we're talking about. Wow. Their economy. Ah, oh, they're not quite gonna hit RTL five. I'm hoping my bot can get ramparts up before it gets attacked. It just finished the storage. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, for one, you've got 40,000 ticks of safe mode because you've got the extra, the extra 20,000 because, you know, when safe mode initially happens, there's no downtime, so you can just run another safe mode. But then That's also, true. like, swarm attacks are really rare. Um, you see them in Screech Warfare Championship sometimes because it's a team battle and there's more benefit, but like doing a swarm attack in bot arena means a ton of spawn time just gone for not a huge gain. Because if you can kill someone with a swarm attack, they probably weren't that big of an opponent anyways, either. It's a couple things. Yeah. And also, I imagine not a lot of people would have automated swarm attacks. They would be manually triggered for Screeps War for a championship. Right, yeah. I think Tega, may, Tega has it, maybe gear. I think that's about it. Tega has everything automated. Tega has... I think he's even got 3x3 three three squads automated. He's crazy. He's so close. Not quite, though. Wow. That... I think gear is the best economy in the game. Yeah, definitely the best early game in this event. Oh, that might have been somewhat circumstance. Because Tiga actually had a decent amount of people around him to start with. Hmm. Uh-oh. 
I think the server kind of broke. What's going on here? Safe mode just ended, so I think the lockdown is happening, maybe. Mm -hmm. Did it break the Steamless client? Oh, we might, we might have paused it. I'm not quite sure what's happening now. <laughs> oh, the server's just fully down. Okay. <laughs> well, that's that's good timing. Sai says it should pause for lockdown in the battery uh, channel. It has to relink for lockdown. Okay. Oh, it's back. Yep, it's running for me again. Oh, nice. Hmm. Maybe I have to restart the stainless plant. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. Hmm. <sighs> it's a little buggy. Welcome back. Hey. Oh, admin's here too. Nice. Hey. Yeah, just got back. So, have you seen Gears Economy? Whoa, look at that chart. Yeah. Holy smokes. It's wild. Oh, yeah, fixed. Yeah, I... We're, we're trying to figure out why it's so much better than anyone else's. And it's kind of hard to say because there's close sources, yeah. But he's not using them perfectly, for sure. And then how are you doing in the in the charts? Nice, okay. I was gonna say probably not great if I had to guess. I uh not all of the graphs work for me for some reason. The the GCL chart's one of them that just says no data when I look at it. Uh oh. Um But I had a uh I think you noticed earlier when I had a bug, it wasn't it like a code, like a syntax bug or something that was airing out, mm -hmm. but I basically found myself in a situation that um, I think it was as soon as my tower was built and I was trying to transition from the, uh, the single role that kind of does everything into the specialized roles where you have miners and harvesters. Um, this hasn't happened for a really long time, but it basically hit a scenario where that transition didn't happen gracefully. Oh. And um, yeah, a bunch of creeps died before the next ones could get spawned. And then I had an actual bug in my crisis recovery code that tries to detect that situation and spawn some units, you know, with minimal energy in the room to mm -hmm. kind of get things recovered. Um, I had an actual bug and had to change a couple lines of code in that because it was not um, detecting that scenario properly and spawning the right unit. Oh, damn. So I'm actually kind of glad that happened during safe mode while I still had the ability to submit a patch. Um, but I think it was uh, once I got that fixed, the, the recovery stuff kind of got the room back in working order. And it's looking good again, but... I mean, it was a pretty bad setback because safe mode looks like it, it just ended recently and I'm still RCL3. Usually I'd be RCL4 um, and either, you know, have the storage up or be working on the storage when the safe mode drops. Yeah. Hmm. That's a, that, I guess that's another point against the general creeps where when you try to transition, it just doesn't always work. 
Yeah, especially because while they were trying to transition, the first thing they do is start building containers, which eats up a lot of the energy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was definitely something that, well, it was a little bit surprising because of how much local testing I've done and I haven't really seen that situation happen for such a long time. So it kind of surprised me, um, but of course it it would happen during Bot Arena. Yeah, of course. But I definitely um, want to work more on the the early startup and try to get those specialized roles starting. Like, I'll probably bring it up to RCL two at first, um, and then eventually, just right out of the gate, it would be nice to just run with them. I am so confused with what Shu is doing here. What have they done to the bot? We've got we've got walls with ramparts. Um walls around the container while inside the ramparts. Uh we've got um a bunch of upgraders moving around to build. Taking from like I don't know, it looks like they're taking from this container over here, but they're only taking very small portions. Well, okay, that guy didn't, but... And then, there, it's barely ever spawning because, um, there's no fast filler. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know, I hope it, I hope it turns around for them. They can carry the torch when I die. But it looks like your bot admin has recovered its... Uh-oh. Oh. Uh, you're kind of cutting a bit. Well, at least it's kind of dealing with the bug a little. But basically, I don't really have a good reason for it. It's just, um, I basically, I basically just took the lazy approach and had the single hauler at the lower level RCLs. And I think it's kind of because my progression in the game and especially because I had, you know, I'm in shard one with a, a big alliance kind of mm -hmm. giving protection. A lot of my, a lot of my development of the game has been kind of just skipping past the lower level progression of the game and right. just focusing more on high level combat and high level systems. And so now as I'm kind of getting back into trying to participate in some of these events and participate in some of the seasons when they happen, um, I'm giving a lot more focus to the, the lower level, you know, um, part of the game, which I was kind of fortunate but unfortunately able to skip past and and just kind of like not really optimize so yeah i definitely have like mm -hmm. more work on that side um and some notes from from this so far to to keep making some changes there i think what you have is all right so long as it doesn't hurt too much with your expansions with your second third fourth etc room then i think you'll be fine because as many people have said the early game doesn't matter nearly as much as the boosting, the multi-rooming, the killing. So, if, I don't know. I think you're fine. Hopefully I can just survive long enough to see that part of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. And the harassment, I wouldn't, I don't know, I wouldn't call the harassment a late game or an early game thing. But, depends. Wow, okay, so we've got gear at RCL 5, and we're on tick 2 point. 21,000 ticks, RCL 5. And and he's still sending energy into his into his controller. He's still upgrading. <laughs> what a madman. What a crazy... Absolutely oh. wild. There's a link up. Are there, where's the... Is there a second link? Oh, yeah, link on the storage, link on the controller. Hmm. And just cranking the ramparts a little bit, like out of energy though. Well, yeah, but it's it's keeping that storage lean and mean. <laughs> yeah, maybe too maybe too lean. 
I, I mean, I can imagine a situation where it's a lot better to heavily upgrade the controller once you have, say, like half the energy to the next RCO instead of just continuously upgrading, which I think is right, pretty... Like there's some there's some idle parts there for sure that could just be recycled right now potentially mm -hmm. well yeah i find if you're ever recycling you're probably doing something wrong well yeah but like when you've got you know 10 upgraders and then you hit rcl4 and suddenly you don't have energy for upgrading again or rcl5 because you don't you know because yeah. you're building structures but in that case i think there are two two things you could do you could have them do other things so if you're building a lot around the storage using your upgraders for building is you know that's a good idea or what you could do is not spawn so many upgraders when you're getting close to the next rcl so then you only have maybe two upgraders by the time you hit rcl5 um just just toning it down as you get closer i think that works but like until until this thing sits where the extensions aren't sitting full then I, I don't believe that it's overspending energy. Mm. I'll show you. I'll show you one day when I have a perfect bot. You'll see. <laughs> or maybe I'm wrong. But wow, still so far ahead of everyone. That link, those links got up so quickly too. And those fast filler containers are staying full, 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 full. Mm -hmm. As they should be. What does that guy do? Interesting. Okay, so his his haulers are definitely pooled, so that they respond to remotes and to claimed room needs. I like that. Keeps the container. Hmm. I don't think I agree with that. I think the container can kind of go at that point. By no. the uh, controller? Yeah, because the controller, if, you, if you're using a link with the controller and the storage, and the links are so close, that's like 100 energy a tick throughput, or maybe 80. It's quite a bit, so I don't think you need the container as well. Yeah, that's true. That's probably just built for it potentially being a little further away than it is. <sighs> no. Guys. Don't do this. Is this a bread star? What is this? We call it the bread triangle. So there seems to be a, an edge case in the traffic manager. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work. Man. Maybe if I kill this guy. No. There we go. All the green lines. You can't say it doesn't look cool, even if it's right now not the most efficient. Even when it's broken, it looks freaking awesome. <laughs> mm. Really yeah, highlighted by the fact that it's um, a yellow dot on the black badge, too. Yeah. You it's a good really see where that energy's going. Say what you want about default. It's a fun badge. It works. It looks good. Those rooms were hard to see in seasonal. Like, mm. I'm, it's hard to see what I'm killing. It's annoying in that regard, for sure. Wow. So many. 
I put rainbow signs in those rooms, though, so. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh, it's so clean. Bounce, 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 bounce. They don't even need a harvest. Oh, okay. They got one. Hmm. The harvester should definitely go round in this case. So hard to deal with that, though. You need to, like, path so, while avoiding the other path. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, one thing I'm not sure that Gearsbot did in the past was to pack extensions around the sources. That's one thing I'm noticing that I'm not sure. Maybe check me if I'm wrong, but I'm not sure whether his bot did before. But now he's definitely got extensions packed fairly tightly around the harvesters of each of the two sources in the main room. Mm. And so that might be something that's boosting his eco. I can see that helping in you need less hauling parts, but it's not huge. It's certainly not huge. And Tiga does that, and I'm pretty sure Gear did that before. There's um, also the Snow Goose uh, energy movement trick of spawning a creep with one attack part and then recycling it instantly to move energy from those remote sources to closer to your fast filler, but I'm not sure if that's actually something that Gearsbot's using right here, just something that you can do. Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, I really like this. Oh, that's so nice. So for the fast fillers that go right next to the spawn, yeah, it's minor, but just saving an extra move part. You know, just put it right up there instead of giving it move. Yep. Not upgrading anymore. No move creeps are great. There should be a, a road here. Or here. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know where the labs are going. Oh! I think they did dynamic labs. I think that's... So they, they would fit if it's dynamic labs. Oh, the cozy little L shape that I've seen? Uh, no, like, like what I do, like, let me show you. It, it doesn't have to be an L shape, it can be almost any shape, where... Right, okay. right. I guess the L shape that I've seen is with the fast filler chomped in the middle for juggling. Mm-hmm. But like here, where you've got labs just put wherever they fit, so long as they can fully boost. Or as fully... As there's a couple that can touch the rest. Mm-hmm. They probably did that, because otherwise I don't see how they would fit. <sighs> when the bot is working, it, it's pretty good. It's Oh, Gears haulers are, are um, bucket brigading a little bit, too, even mm -hmm. though they're large. But if they were smaller, they could brigade so much more. I have to wonder what they're spending their CPU on if it's not on creeps. Yeah, but, like, I mean, with only 30, 35, that's, uh, you know, that's not a ton to cook on extra intense for little baby creeps. Okay, I'm running 88 creeps right now, and I'm doing fine. Um, and it kind of helps that they're, they were stuck for a bit, but you can definitely run, <laughs> you can definitely run that many.
almost RCL4. All right, I am back. Nice. Welcome, welcome. Another red line, though. I'm not, I'm not loving that. Viking, your neighbor down south had some, uh, had some bugs. Looks like we might have lost Viking from the call. He had to sleep. Yeah, I think Viking left a while ago. He's doing a, a good job of keeping my remotes down, which is quite annoying. Did his economy eventually recover? It's... It doesn't look fully recovered, but it's uh, it, it's making progress. It's, it seems to be putting more into the fight than it is to its own economy, so it's leaving its southern and western remotes abandoned, which is probably not for the best. Oh, I see, yeah. yeah. I think Cyrus and Gear are fighting now. A lot of ramparts from gear. A lot of rampart hits. Feels unnecessary. How many are we talking? Hmm. Oh, seventy five K? Yeah. That's not too expensive. Hmm. Adds up for sure. Gear's got roads into, but he's not using this one, is he? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. There you go, Marvin. You just hit RCL four. Finally. Oh, Ten thousand ticks too late. Build that storage. Yeah. Unless they do a triangle again, which I'm sure they'll try to. <laughs> There's a lot of creeps on that source. What's that about? Hmm. Lego Nick is yeah. behind. I feel like, and, and Gear can probably check me on this if I'm wrong, but I feel like the Gearbot upgrade we're seeing is that it's it's packing these extensions on the sources and using them. It seems to be so little. actively cooking the energy out of those extensions. I mean, it helps, but like, on one source? Yeah, well, the other one has two on it, so I guess, yeah, kind of. Oh, oh I yeah, see. you're right. I didn't know that. It's actually really frustrating to see that Vikings bot is not mining any sources right now, but it's still using all of its economy to put harassers in both of my bots remotes <laughs> and actually pinning pinning them down. Like uh east nine north four is just like ten plus attackers plus, uh, from Viking. That's that's almost half of his creeps on on the field right now. Yeah, that's why I avoided spawning near Viking. Yeah, I, I was, uh, was I, was I hoping, know. I mean, I, I was the last person. I was the last person to spawn in. I think so. Uh, I didn't have didn't have too many options. <laughs> just on the other hand, I'm on the same side of the map as Tiga, so we'll see how that goes. It'll go great. Once sure. he hits RCL seven, real great. the stats and that. Uh, yeah, I think I'm probably going to sign off and uh, just keep an eye on it while I move on to other things.
Yeah, I'm going to do the same. This has been a long stream. All right. Thanks, everyone, for been, showing up. Yeah, it's been Thanks fun for to the stream, uh, Marvin. look at everyone's initial echoes together. and yeah. cool, to, cool to talk about the meta. I think we all learned something, and I hope people watching can be like, oh, this is cool. We learned some nice stuff from some people who are pretty good at this game. We'll see. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Good luck on the rest of the event. Yeah. Bye. See ya. Bye.